Yeah. One thing. Made a promise to my mama that I bless her with some grandkids. She's spoiled, I'm spoiled. Till then, I'm getting dollars. I'm just doing what I gotta. Can a man live? And it's all day. I'm a guy, get a whole squad of job, get them all paid. Came a long way from all state. Yeah, now we all in all right well welcome back to the left home podcast jordan is currently at work so he might come in here sometime eventually but on today's episode we have matthew honeycutt yeah he's a vocalist for kublai khan yeah kublai khan kublai khan he is also a barber my barber when i have extra money and can afford haircuts and i don't have to cut it myself and he's now gonna be a tattoo artist pretty soon yeah Moving to Florida, moving out to Tampa. Try and hold it, probably, but like this way. This way, but but like Can I just put it on the crotch. You think? Yeah, that'll work. Hold yep. it like this. Huh? Yeah. So yeah, moving out to Florida. How the, so? How'd that come about? Well, when the pandemic started, because our two of our guys just kind of sat on their nuts, and then in the band, yeah, because okay. we didn't know we literally the we got a call and we were like, hey. You know, shit's going crazy, so the next month is off. Mm -hmm. We're like, okay, like, no big deal. That's, like, doable. We got a call pretty much the same day. that was like, yeah, next year's, like, gone. So they were, like, every man for himself. And I was living in West Virginia at the time, so I just immediately started working at Kroger's, which is the same thing as fries down here. Yeah. And I was just bagging groceries. And I was like, dude, this fucking sucks. I was like, I got to get the fuck out of here. I got to figure this out. So I, I was supposed to start apprenticing under a bunch of dudes in Ohio to start being a tile setter, like doing like backsplashes and kitchens and shit like that. Okay. And I was just asking all my friends in the friend group, like, what's up with your job? Like, what's up with welding? What's up with this? Like a trade that I could get into. Yeah. And Bardo was, because we toured together because he was in a band called No Zodiac. Yep. And I hit him up and I was like, hey, you know, what's up with Barber? And could I try that out? Like, would you ever be willing to do that? And he was literally like, yo, Arizona's opening back up in a week. He's like, you move down here. I'll get all the paperwork figured out so we can do your apprenticeship. And I just, dude, I dipped out. I paid fucking four grand off to get out of my rent in West Virginia. Because you usually got to pay like two or three yeah, months I, or something yeah, to get I out. I mean, rent there was cheap anyways, but I paid that off, scooted out within like two or three weeks, got here and started doing that. Now, simultaneously, our bassist, he started his apprenticeship in Philly area to be a tattooer. So me and him were on like the same trajectory as far as like trades. So on this last tour, I can cuss on here, right? It doesn't matter. Yeah. Whatever so, the fuck you want. Yeah. I, I've been wanting to cuss this whole time. And I'm like, oh, yeah, no, we don't, we don't edit anything. <laughs> he, he, we did this thing. He called it the meat market. He ripped that fucking shit off. And I was doing haircuts before the shows and he was doing tattoos and just watching him. This is on your, like, your last tour, yeah, like, recently. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just got back from that, like, yeah. three weeks ago or some shit. Yep. And, like, he'd be like, ah, oh, the day was, like, okay. And he made, like, two or three hundred dollars. And a, the best day I had was making 80. And I was like, fuck, dude. Cutting hair? Like, yeah. Or, like, on tour, not yeah, on shop. tour. Okay, you yeah. You know what I mean? And so we end up at this place in Tampa, and it's called Momentum Tattoo, because he knew some of the artists. I knew some of the artists there. So, because that whole tour was two nights every city. So, we had a fucking full half day every two days in the city to do mm-hmm. whatever we wanted. You know what I mean? So, he went there to do that, and I followed him to cut some hair. And, like I said, two of the artists are people we've already toured with. So, we already had an in. And I've been kind of, like, shadowing him the whole time, being like, yo, I want to learn to do this shit, too. Because, like, at the end of the day, and I've told Bardo and everybody this, like, I kind of fell in love with cutting hair. I think it's great. But it's not ever what I set out to do. I'm kind of just chasing right now as far as like what 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 am I gonna be good at that's lucrative that I'm gonna like love long term. Yeah. And barbering's that, but then tattooing is like kind of just another one. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. want to compare the two yet because I haven't even fucking really started yet. Right. But basically I did the same thing with that dude. The owner of the shop, he's got twelve artists, he's expanding it to four more rooms and shit. And I just kind of put my nuts on the table because he came out to the show and I was like, hey dude, like what is anybody in the shop looking for an apprentice? Cause I was like, I just got my barber's license. They already know I'm trying to like move somewhere and kind of find the next spot. And he's like, fuck yeah, let's do it. And he's the owner of the shop. So I'm getting apprentice by the owner. So it should be pretty good. So yeah. have, you, guess, have you done a tattoo ever? Have yeah, you got shit. 
fucking tattoos. Yeah. Out in Oklahoma. I've done like kitchen tables. Oh yeah. (laughs) That's like half of mine. I got like nine tattoos. I think like six of them are like by me or my buddies. (laughs) Yeah, dude. I was chewing people up. And it was just like dudes in the friend group. Yeah. And it'll be nice because like I've cut your hair before. Like I'm not very good at cutting hair. It takes a long time to get good, but like drawing right out of the gate something I can actually do. So it was kind of like that probably should have been my first thought to do that, but I always talk myself out of it because I was like, yo, like, I've walked into plenty of, like, tattoo shops and hung out there, and I'm like, the clientele sucks. Like, fucking motherfuckers just walking in, just, like, bugging you the whole time. Yeah. Like, I don't want to deal with that. Because with tattoos, it's a quick turnover. Or, I mean, barbering. You got a guy in there. He's out. For fucking half an hour. Yeah, you get him in and out. You don't have to see him for another three weeks. It's like with tattooing, it's like, you could do two tattoos, but depending on if it's like a little jammer or some shit, like it could take all fucking day. You right. spend it with that motherfucker, like yeah. So I was like, whatever. But I'm gonna I'm gonna get it figured out, and I want to do it. But dude, Florida's gonna be sick. Florida kind of seems like like one of the like the spot to be right now. I would shit, I would yeah, kind of say as far as one, it's pretty much wide open. My yeah. my actually my best friend who I lived with like for both of the past three years, he's out working in Florida this past year too. So he's uh-huh. like, he said like as far as being able to do whatever you want right Florida now. <laughs> it's, fuck, yeah, they don't give a shit. So. Florida hasn't given a fuck forever. Anybody wants to hate on them. And I'm like, dude, like, y'all are like the dudes that, that hate on people for having fun. And yeah. Like being good at shit. Yeah. It's like, who the fuck really wants to keep doing this? Like, and you and to hear motherfuckers saying that shit too that live in Arizona. It's like, dude, Arizona didn't really shut down. Like, why are you no. guys, you guys want to do that? Like, yeah. we're getting through this. We're doing all right. Like, I got to go to work. So yeah. I'm going to go where the work is. That's why I had to leave West Virginia. You know what I mean? Yo. So, yeah, no, Florida's going to be the tits. And it's going to be cool, too, because it's in Tampa, which, like, you've been to Florida, right? Only when I was in, like, 15, maybe. So yeah. not for a while. So I never really like, experienced Florida. Florida's fucking, it's a trip. Because, like, you go to, like, places like Jackson and shit like that, which I'm not talking shit. Like, I love all of Florida. But, like, it's different. Yeah. Different parts you go. And I feel like Tampa at least, in my, you know, for me, I've only been to certain parts, but it's like, it seems pretty, like, neutral. Like, it's not too rednecky, but it's not too fucking Scarface, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So I think it'll be pretty good. Yeah. But we'll fucking see. Yeah, I'm moving definitely. Way. Right. <laughs> I definitely want to get out there some sometime in the next, like, probably, like, four or five months. We're, me and my girlfriend are building out this van out front. Yeah. So we're hoping to got, take like, it on. cars out there, dude. <laughs> you said you got five people in this motherfucker. Yeah. Well, my, my my roommate, David, he owns, like, a luxury car rental business. So we got, like, sports cars fucking in and out all day. Like, all sorts of shit. We're oh, just shit. taking over. Half the time, the cul-de-sacs, like, probably got, like, $2 million worth of cars out, all parked around it. What about the dude that lives on this? Uh, you got the big truck. Is he a dickhead or is he cool? You know, we kind of, like, assume they're dickheads we've never said a word to yeah. him i saw his truck and, and like, yeah he's got fucking nuts dude. pink nuts hanging yeah. from the b- and they just pull up and like i would drive i don't truck, know though. i drive over <laughs> other cars in that truck, you know what i mean yeah so i don't know we never actually said anything to him but one time they bitched at us for leaving our garbage out in the like our garbage can out in the street like three hours after garbage pickup like you drag it back yeah, then they got like, nothing better yeah that. that's but, one thing about arizona in general dude is like I love it here. Don't get me wrong. Everything's cool. But like neighbors are fucking weird here. I'm used to Texas and shit where like you see your neighbors and everybody like, waves. Yep. Like everybody's well, cool everyone has shit. fences here. Yeah. One. And big ass concrete fences. Yep. Dude, it's not even like. That was one of the weirdest things I thought when I first moved here was like in Minnesota too. Is It's like if you're in a neighborhood, all four of your neighbors, like your whole backyard could be like a bunch of people having bonfires, grill outs all at the same time. Uh-huh. And you're all friendly and everything here. It's like, nobody wants to say a word to you. Fuck No, dude, <laughs> it's weird. These people that I live next, I told you I live in like just right up the street. Yeah. Man, and I'm just renting a room. But like these families will just like sit out till like three in the morning. That too. Just like barbecue. I'm like, I don't give a fuck about that. They're not the problem. Like they just bought this dog that oh, they just dude. leave outside. And the motherfucker howls. And I feel bad for the dog. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, dude, you got, I've never seen him touch the dog or didn't do any shit like that. But I'm mm-hmm. like, how much of an asshole do you have to be to, like, get a dog, leave it outside 24-7, yeah. listen to it, like, cry, and then just do nothing and be like, our neighbors probably don't give a fuck. That's literally, like, the neighbor that way, that way, straight back, and on the side. Every one of them has dogs, and they let them out in the morning, and they just keep them out there. They bark all fucking day. Yeah. And then it makes... When we let our dogs out, they go, they fucking, go fucking nuts. nuts. Yeah. And then we bring ours back in and they just let theirs fucking bark constantly. How long you been living here? 
been living here like seven months now. Well, then you hit summertime, didn't you? Yeah. Did they yeah. do that in the summer? You know, I don't know if they left them out there, but they're still annoying as hell when they were yeah, out people there. People who do that are pieces of shit. Because yeah. people get mad at the dog. It's like, it's not the fucking dog's fault. They're a fucking creature. They don't know what yeah. different. You know what I mean? But I don't know. I don't like that shit. Yeah. But if it was up to me, I would have like a chihuahua that stays in the house. And then like a couple of pit bulls that stay in the house. You know, like go outside, take a shit. But like, I want to hang out with you. Yeah. Buy a dog to fucking give it a shit life. I'm going to drink a water. Yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not necessarily a huge dog guy unless they're like the super chill ones. You got four fucking monsters. Yeah, but they ain't mine. House, <laughs> but is this your blanket? You like cats? Yeah, I actually got this blanket when I was living in my car out in Maryland. Oh, cool. And cause working out there like two years ago now, and uh, I re- I like literally I was doing fiber optic locating back then for like oh, Century yeah, Link. Like you know when you see all the diamonds and shit painted on the sidewalks, like for utilities oh, okay, yeah, and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was doing that. That was like a like, couple of years ago now, and. I was broke as fuck, and I was, they're like, hey, we'll send you out to Maryland. And I was like, "Where? Right, when do I got to be there? They're like, in two days, which it's like 36 hours from here. Mm-hmm. So I literally packed my car up that, like, half hour later, I hit the road. Realized I didn't even bring a blanket, so I went to, like, a Goodwill and picked up this fucking cat blanket. This was supposed to keep you warm. <laughs> well, it was, like, summer, so it was, oh, it I was, was pretty hot. Like 20 of these, <laughs> yeah, no, but... <laughs> well, dude, I'm glad you held on So it's kind of, like, a cool little thing that reminds me of, like, Living in my fucking car. But, but, uh, so let's talk about the band then. Okay. I know a little bit, like, from what we've talked at the barbershop, uh-huh. but you've been at it for a while, right? Yeah, dude, since 2008. 2008. Yeah. What, well, it just turned to 2022? Yeah. How long? So, is that? what is that? That's, that's like 12, 13 14 years. years. Ugh, bro, that sucks. Jeez. I was in our first show with this band, was the, it was the first weekend of my second semester of my senior year of high school, bro. Like, I was halfway through my senior year when we had this band already fucking named. Holy we shit. Were playing shows. Like, this has kind of been, like, the meal ticket for a minute. Yeah. And it wasn't a fucking meal ticket for years, bro. It yeah. Just was a reason I wasn't eating. You know what I mean? Damn. But it's good, dude. Like. So it, is it still all the original guys? Fuck no, man. I'm the only original original member. Oh, okay. The. Our drummer, he's second in line. He he joined maybe like a year and a half after two years because we broke up for like a year because one motherfucker wanted to go to the military. He ended up spending like a year on top of a mountain in South Korea. And like we were like, well, we don't have a drummer. Right. And the guitar player we had, like he ended up working at his dad's electrical store. Like it just, it all fell apart. And then I started, was like, well, I'm not doing shit. I still want to play music. So I was playing with some other guys. And our drummer was in that band, and we were starting a new band, and they were like, why the fuck are we doing this? Like, we already have music with Kubla Khan. Let's just do that. So we got it back together. Pretty much, like, everybody's been in for the last six years. So it's like okay. people have really only started checking the radar genuinely since probably about Warp Tour, which was 2018. So it's like, as far as everybody's concerned, like, they've never seen any so of So you guys faces. played Warp Tour? Yeah, we did the whole fucking thing. And then that... Is that what kind of like popped it off? That then? definitely helped, yeah. Because that's why we had fucking, we had to add TX on the end of our name because there's another Kubla Khan okay. from the 80s that's like a thrash band. And this is my fucking theory. We were sitting there writing one of the records way back, right? After Warps, so I saw that maybe 2019. And we started seeing Facebook just blowing the fuck up and being stupid. They literally went on like Microsoft Paint or some shit. And they're from, like, your side of the area, like, Midwest area. Okay. And they sent us, like, a cease and assist about our name and our fans because it's on. The are they, internet. like, a big band or are you guys, like, the bigger band? Oh, we're definitely bigger. I mean, their claim to fame was, like, I think one of their guys, like, I think it was, like, the dude from Megadeth. Maybe Dave Mustaine. It was, like, one of his first. He was, like, his band before Megadeth or some shit. I don't fucking know. I really don't give a fuck, to be honest with you. Like, the way they handled it was stupid. And they're, like, a lot older than us. And I don't think they really understood the concept of, like, what they were doing. Because our fans on social media just fucked <laughs> them up, dude. And Because I would assume, just for, like, Baxter, like, wh- what kind of music is it? Like, like their music or ours? Y- your music. Ours is, like, like just metalcore, like, just heavy knuckle dragger shit. Right. So I would assume the most fan bases for that type of music 
they don't give a fuck. They're gonna. Oh no, dude, they're they'll, gonna. They'll lay you out. For that yeah. Reason, you know what I'm <laughs> and dude, they got all fucked up, man. Like they were like their wives. They started. I mean, they were being shitty. They were like, oh man, you guys are just a bunch of toothless hillbillies and all that shit like that. And it's like, yeah, we might be hillbillies. Like we still got our teeth and shit. And, like, <laughs> their wives were jumping in, and one of their wives was talking all kinds of shit. And uh, I guess she was pregnant or something. And our fans, we did keep in mind, we didn't say shit. We were just watching it play out because we're like, yo, we're if you want to handle this through like professional like way with right. lawyers or whatnot, like do it that way. Don't fucking come at us on fucking Facebook, right? You know I mean? <laughs> and yeah, it got all fucked up because one of their one of their wives was pregnant and she was talking shit, like defending them, and people were just chewing her up. And she was, they were like, you can't say that to a pregnant woman. Like she's pregnant. What if something happens? And I'm just like, what do you want us to do, man? We we literally the whole time didn't say shit. I think we already had their email because they've been fucking doing whatever before. But my theory is, is that Warp Tour was the the catalyst. They saw that we were doing that, and they're like, yeah. "Okay, we can get some fucking money out of these dudes." It's like probably we're broke. They probably you know knew before even. Ah, oh, dude, they. Had but to they know were just like, exist. I mean, if you fucking YouTube it or yeah. something, both of y'all probably come up. Well, the but then they were probably like, up. "Oh, they got money now, maybe." Yeah, like, I think that was a fucking thing because they, you know, if you want to like do whatever. Whatever, but it's like we're not gonna spend the money to fucking try and fight that shit. All our handles already had a TX on it. Who gives a shit? You think we care? Like you're not gonna stop the locomotive. Like we're gonna keep right. going. So do whatever you want to do. And yeah, that's what we just fucking tacked on a little TX and fucking haven't heard shit. Is that for Texas? Yeah, yeah. Because like I said, all our handles are that, and it's like nobody's gonna be like, oh well, I've never heard of Kublacon TX. I've only heard of Kublacon. It's like dumb idiot. Everybody knows we're from Texas anyway. So right. It's like, it really, it's kind of like it doesn't really matter for no, you guys, other than like the trademark. All we had to or do whatever. was change the logo like a little bit. Yeah, and that was it. But yeah, point being, warped. I think was what really was like. Okay, maybe these guys we have a fucking problem with them now because it actually is substantial or something. Which even then, it's like it's fucking not. You know what I mean? But I don't know. Huh. Whatever. It's lame shit, anyways. So the last six years that you said it's been pretty much the the same guys. Then yeah, yeah. Okay. I was last night we. were... Me and my, me and Paula were laying in bed listening to like throwbacks and Hinder Lifts of an Angel came on. And then I was like, I got to see what these guys are up to nowadays. And I guess they have a whole new singer now. There's probably. Mm -hmm. And it's just like not the same at all. Like it's a completely different band almost now. Like this, their sound. Yeah. And so I was going and every comment is just them ripping apart the new singer. Oh, 100%. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? Well, plus I think they're one of those bands that like realistically who the fuck knows anything else besides that fucking song if yeah. you can name other songs other than that like I'm like, mm. like <laughs> yeah. what, is, what kind of person are you you know what I'm saying like that's just kind of fucked up yeah and they're, they're probably I don't know I think COVID fucked a lot of shit up with music anyways but it's like they're one of those bands I, I would just I don't know I don't know if they, they would ever watch this I don't care if they think I'm talking shit but like why don't you just stop if, if, if you fucking <laughs> yeah. if the singer sucks and people don't like him just either get the old guy back or just fuck off yeah you know right Cause it, that's Cause it's like, not the same then no, like, at all a lot of bands fall into that pitfall dude where they're like oh you know motherfuckers are replaceable and it's like kinda no cause if that, I feel like if the lead singer has a certain sound oh yeah you're not really replacing that well, plus people get attached yeah I mean, think about it, especially Hinder man there's motherfuckers that have Fucked and made their kids to the song. <laughs> That's a deep thing for them. You know, there's people with yeah. tattoos and shit. Like, it's a whole yeah. different ball game when you're fucking with like dad rock because those are people that they don't got much going on anyways. <laughs> so they need that shit. Dad rock. That's funny. Oh, so was Warp Tour was that your first like biggest show then? Nah, we did a lot of cool shit before that. Warp Tour was sick because it was like the last one. You've been to Warp Tour, right? No, never uh, did. No, oh, dude. I didn't go to a concert until, tw like, like December of 2019. And then the year 2020, I went to 22 concerts. That's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I mostly, like, the EDM joint, right? N now, because that seemed, that came back first, I feel like, too. Have you ever been to, like, a metal or hardcore show? No. Well, I've been to, uh, what the, f what the hell are they called? I don't know. No. <laughs> I, went. <laughs> I can't remember. I've been to one. And there was like Mosh Pit, the lead singer jumped off the balcony into yeah, the crowd and shit. So, and I was like, I like this as the like what it is for like an experience, but I'm like, there's music. I'm like, it's not definitely not my oh, thing, yeah. really, you know. Well, there's a lot of those bands that fucking suck. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of days where I think about the band I'm in and I'm just like, 
why the fuck? Like, there's people, there's people that'll walk up to us and merch and be like, dude, you guys are my favorite band. Like, you've changed my life. And I'm like, bro, you need to grow up. Like, <laughs> you need to find a different band to listen to. But I'm appreciative. I'm not, a, I'm not like, right. a about it. But I'm just like, that's fucked up. Cause like, for me, it's like, yo, like, I don't know, go listen to Elton John or something that's like, like really like expansive. That, it is weird. Cause when I first, first met you, and then I think I like, I think you said, I probably knew you were like a musician and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then when I f like heard your songs, actually, I was like, there's no way this is coming out of this guy. Like, Dude. I was like, what the hell? If I had a nickel for every time <laughs> somebody has said that shit. And I don't blame them, dude. Like, this just like, super chill dude with that, like, a southern accent. Like, oh. and then just fucking, dude, what? I posted this dude. I don't have a Twitter or anything, but it was getting shared around. I posted on my story on the last tour. Because some random guy, he was getting retweeted because he posted. He's like, man, it's kind of disappointing that... uh he was like that the vocalist the Kublacan is just some Mexican with a southern accent. <laughs> and I was like, damn. And I just put, you know, ne never let him see your next move because I'm Filipino. I'm not even Mexican. Oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I was just like, that's that's kind of how it's always been. Because a lot of think about how many bands you listen to, you don't know what the fuck those guys look like. You know, no. and then you meet them and you're just like, ugh, that's what the fuck they are, you know what I mean? Yeah, unless unless they're like the mainstream type like most of the mainstream musicians you know what they look like but oh yeah well they plash everything other than that anymore. unless you're like a number one fan you know you don't yeah. really don't really know i feel like i it, it it can change how you like you'll hear all these songs and you see who's singing them sometimes you're like huh yeah like it, it, it it's weird but i mean i don't know what people expect i also just don't give a shit i don't give a shit about most stuff in general it's just like let it roll because like I would tell anybody that it's like if you don't want to give something a chance because of the way people look, like that's on you. Yeah. But at the same time, like it just is what it is, you know. You so, so when you started the band, was that the type of music that you're listening to mainly? Oh yeah. Okay. Well, that dude, that was what do we say that was? You, Thirteen you, years ago or some shit. Fourteen years ago, yeah. Thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, that's. I mean, dude, I'm a whole different person than yeah. I was. Like. That was a whole different time. I was listening. To, it's funny because, like, even rolling up here to your house, like, I'm still listening to the same shit I was listening to back then as far as heavy music. Like, there's very few bands in, like, heavy music right now that, like, A, I even know about because I'm not one of those, like, dudes that just goes out looking for shit. But even then, there's, like, there's not a lot of shit that excites me anymore besides the stuff that first got me into it because, like, I don't think it's nostalgia. I just think that kind of just like anything else, like... It was there's better. Just, yeah, there's a lot of just shit coming out. <laughs> yeah. People are just reinventing the same thing, but all it is is just younger people doing older shit thinking it's new because they didn't exist back then. Yep. You know what I mean? Which we're hypocrites. We do that shit too a little bit, but it's like, I don't know. I just can't get down with a lot of this shit because it's like, I've heard it before. Mm -hmm. Like, And it's all just recycled. And I think that kind of goes across the spectrum for a lot of different kinds of music. Very few people are like actually okay with taking risks. You yeah, know what I mean, and trying to do something creative, trying to do something different, because dude, the internet now it will just chew you the fuck up. You even just look at somebody wrong, and you're just done. You know what I mean? So, I think people try and really keep it in the the framework of just like what's safe, right? You know what I'm saying? Plus, yep. it's like it's the same thing on movies, man. Everything's a fucking remake now because like all the shit that was good, all the good stories have been told. Yep. If you're gonna make another story, it's pretty much just gonna be a reskin of a story that's already been done. Fucking Star Wars, dude. Like, the first Star Wars was, like, pretty much a Western. Hmm. You know, if you really... I've never really that, even like, watched much Star Wars, so I don't really know. Shit, dude. Star yeah. Wars sucks. <laughs> the, Hot the, takes. The three, the, the three guys in my band are obsessed with it, and I fucking hate it. I can't stand that shit. Like, I, I gave it a chance, but now it's become, like, such a fucking, like, cult following thing where it's, like, people are just, like... I don't know. They're too into it, and they're feeding this machine of just like, dude, horrible fucking spinoffs and stupid fucking. The, have you? You said you haven't seen the new Star Wars, but like the new ones that came out are just hot. I gotta ass, assume bro. they're horrible. Yeah. They're fucked up because it's just it's all just hey, how can we tap into nostalgia and make as much fucking money as possible? And that shit sucks, man. You you want to talk about creatives and shit like that? Like, I think like Hollywood and big business and fucking. Anywhere that money's going to be made, it's going to just kill that desire Yo. You know, to take risks, to actually do a good fucking story and shit like that. Because they don't have to anymore. 
They'll fucking come out with another Marvel movie and then just shove it down your dick hole and be like, you're going to like it. That's because all the people who are like diehard Marvel fans, like they're going to watch it. Even if it's their, their even if it's their last, their lowest rated movie, they still got the ticket sales. Well, dude, I fucking, my favorite movie of all time is Jurassic Park. Like the first one. I haven't seen them in a while, but as a kid, I liked them. It still holds up. I'll, I'll fight this till the day I die. It still has the best CGI of any movie ever created. And it's just a perfect fucking story. And, dude, you watch all the ones coming out now, like the new Jurassic World movies, and it fucking burns me because, like, yeah, I'm going to go Aren't watch there, like, them. robots in that shit now or something? It's getting fucked up. Yeah, there's, like, clones <laughs> yeah. and people are fucking doing all this stupid shit and auctioning dinosaurs off. And it's, it, I get it. They're building the universe or whatever, but it's, like, it's just like, yo, what, I just I liked the first one because it was just a good little science fiction action. Yeah. Movie. You didn't need to do more. It's, and like, now simple. now there's fucking six of them. And the next one's going to come out. I'm going to fucking see it because I have to see <laughs> it. Because you got to. But it's like it's the same thing. It burns me because I'm like, bro, I know it's going to it's it's gonna suck. It's not going to meet up to any expectations. I'm still going to walk away being like, why did they do this shit? But I'm programmed in, man. I'm going to watch it. Did you see the new Matrix? No. No. I'm not. A, I don't watch much stuff that's not like real, basically. Like documentary stuff or what? Uh, no, just like I guess not necessarily real, but like sci-fi type or like oh yeah, shit like anything like that. I'm just not a big fan of like, at all. Not really. I don't, dude. Man, you should just trust me. If there's one thing out of this conversation, maybe I should just try the Matrix. Don't fuck with okay. anything past it. Don't watch any of the other ones. They all fucking get stupid. But watch the first. one. I have as I've like obviously being like a videographer, I've started to watch movies a little differently, and rather than view them as just like entertainment i try and like learn from them yeah so that's what i think a lot with these older kind of like classics is you gotta that's like they're the best for a reason 100 percent. so you can watch them and watch the kind of digest Matrix. them as something other than just entertainment yeah you can see where all action movies there was like action movies and then it was kind of like what do we do now they put out the matrix and then it just it rechanged the formula because hmm. it was such a fucking smash hit there was not fucking shit like it before that and, yeah, there was just a bunch of... I feel like every movie after that tried to somehow knock off the Matrix. The the second Matrix is all they are just trying to knock off on the fucking first one because it was so good. It's got the perfect ending, perfect storyline. They could have literally ended it there, and it would have been fine. But, like, anytime there's a good idea, anytime there's something that, like, is badass like that, they just got to go pillage it. They got to just squeeze it for everything it's worth. And that shit fucking sucks, dude, because... When they put out the the newest one, I haven't fucking seen it. I refuse to see it because everybody says it sucks so bad. But they're basically saying that they told Keanu Reeves that, you know, hey, we're making a fourth fucking Matrix. Do you want to be in it? Because we want you to be in it. You're the fucking main guy. And whoever made the first three, the directors or whatever, he's like, yeah, I'll do it, but only if they're working on it. And they were like, no, they're not. And we're going to make it regardless. So... And he kind of, from what I gather, like, he jumped on the project and did it just because he didn't want it to tank. He had to, like, save it because yeah, it wasn't Yeah, and the, it still sucked. It damn. fucking tanked. And it's like, dude, you didn't have to go down with the shit, man. Like, uh, that's probably Jordan right there. Do I need to scoot down? What's uh, going on? You're good right now. We'll just we'll see phone. what Walk happens. Jordan, that you? You ready? Yeah, I'm just going to put myself away for All right. Hey, what's up, brother? What's up, man? Eh. Uh, you want to wait a minute then or what? Yeah, might as well. Jordan just got here, so we'll just wait for him to get in here. One thing I do know with that music, though, is, like, I, I like listening to, like, pop punk and, like, country. I would say are probably, like, my two number one genres. Yeah. But whenever I'm kind of, like, burnt out of the new stuff, I, like, I'm the type where, like, I find ten songs and then listen to them over and over for, like, a month and a half. From various artists? Or yeah, from, yeah, yeah. I'm the same way, But dude. then I burn them out, and then the only thing I can ever go back to is just, like, the classic pop punk stuff, like, and then the classic, like... What kind of pop punk, though? Like, anywhere from, like, Fall Out Boy to, like... Hey, yeah, that's good shit. Blink-182 and all that Yeah, shit. like, the classics, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, how old are you? 20... Not oh, 28. Me, bro. I can't remember. 31. Okay. Damn, you need me to move, man? But yeah. You good? Here. Excellent, dude. I think you got to hit the on switch on the mic, too. 
Test, test, test. All right, JT's here. Good to have you, man. Hey, appreciate it, man. It's good awesome. to meet you. Yeah, dude. Yeah, so we were just talking, talking a little movies, music, all sorts of shit. Fuck yeah. His band played fucking Warp Tour. Really? So I feel like yeah. that's... Two and a half months of that shit, dude. It was yeah. good, though. It was fun. What so, year was that? 2018. 2018? Okay. I still had fucking braids and shit. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> dude. dude oh, living damn. large, man. I remember when you told me that... Was it your whole, like, Europe... Or was it the whole tour or some shit? But you said you did, like, a European tour wearing overalls and oh, braids no down under. to your ass, yeah. basically. And just, that was it. <laughs> I just put on my underwear and then put on my overalls. And it was funny because, like... We'd get on stage. I remember we were in the UK, and we got on stage, and I was just wearing, like, my hat, overalls, no shirt, no shit, and everyone in the front crowd was like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> and then we started playing, and you see them all go, uh, like, this shit makes sense. And they kept calling them, like, dungarees over there and shit, and I was like, as long as people are into it, I'm not going to change what I'm doing regardless. Right. So it's like, fuck it. But, yeah, we're always trying to do some weird shit. I feel like that's how you... Gotta, gotta catch the eyes or something. Oh, yeah, but. dude. Well, plus, like, people, it's like I said earlier, they don't realize, like, man, like, we're literally, like, actually a bunch of, like, just dudes from the middle of nowhere. Like, yeah. We don't give a fuck. If right. you don't like it, you can just suck my dick. You know what I mean? it's, like, it's not something oh, yeah. that's ever going to bother me. Like, people talk shit all day long, and it's like 90% of the people that talk shit, they ain't doing shit. Right. They fucking eat cereal, man, like, for fucking <laughs> breakfast, and I'm... I got to go to work. I got to go on tour, do whatever I do. And I'm not trying to say that like I'm better than anybody else, but it's just like people need to just learn to take a seat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because like they ain't doing shit. Yep. It is what it is. I don't want to sound like a cocksucker. But no, that's what we need. <laughs> that's it's true shit. though. You know? It is. You. I feel like you, like from, from the conversations I've had with you, which is probably about like four haircuts that would take yeah. about an hour. <laughs> so we did. Unfortunately. <laughs> But hey, it was always a good time. Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean. So it's like, but you seem like, like you do all this cool shit, in my opinion. But you also like seem so unattached almost to it. Like you just I feel like, like you don't be, man. give a fuck at all. <laughs> well, here's the thing. There's like, I I've been touring for a long time, and I know a lot of dudes that like their persona or whatever. Like they. The pandemic was a perfect example of people that just, like, got nothing going on. Like, yeah. you could be in a sick-ass fucking band doing your shit, going on tour, and then a pandemic starts, and they're like, yo, you got to go work at Kroger for a year. And their whole identity just shatters. And it's like, I made a personal choice just in general in my life because it's like, I never want what I do or, like, anything like that to be the forefront of my personality because, like, I don't know. There's more to people than that. You know what I mean? And that's why even approaching like barbering and tattooing and all that other shit, it's like that shit's cool, but like I'm not ever going to switch up what I'm doing because I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? It's kind of like people can judge you based on like what yeah. they can see on the outside, but like they're never really going to know and they're never, it, it doesn't matter. And I ain't going to take the time to explain it because it's just so many people, man, they get so fucking hung up on trying to convince everybody that they're cool. And all this shit. And that's like, to me, that's a red flag. Like, the people in the room that are trying to be the cool guys, I'm just like, mm -hmm. it's it just doesn't work out. You know what I mean? If, you, if you're trying to do this shit, especially with music, in the long run, you want some longevity, you want a lifespan, pump the fucking brakes, man. Because people are going to see through that shit. And it's like, at the end of the day, all this has a shelf life. And when it ends, what the fuck are you going to do with yourself? You're going to be that fucking lame-ass motherfucker that's stuck, like, just talking about the shit you used to do? Like, Get a grip on yourself. Figure out that you're your own person. You're not your band. Mm -hmm. You're not your occupation. You're not social media, all this other shit. And just realize that, like, life's a little bit bigger than that. But everybody's getting so fucking... I'm not trying to go down like a wormhole or nothing. But, like, I just feel like people are getting way too conditioned to just live in the now. Like, mm -hmm. I always talk about the long game with people. Nobody's playing the fucking long game anymore. No. Everything's a short game. What can I do right the fuck now to get what I want? And just like exactly, they want to just instantly, you know. And it's starting younger and younger. Yeah. You know what I mean? People, that's been their whole existence. Is just like, oh, I can have whatever the fuck I want right the fuck now. Human beings aren't built like that. That's not the way the world works. And when you're able to kind of take a step back and realize, like, damn, like, I, I'm a, I have a cool life. Like, I have things that I can do. I have talents that I should work on. This or that. Like, I don't know. Like I said, I just feel like people need to pump the brakes on just who the fuck they think they are, because nine times out of ten, they're fucking not. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. Like I said, I don't sound like a dickhead. Because there's, I, like I, because where, how I see it is kind of, I'm, I'm, everything I do right now, like today, tomorrow, like in the short game is all for the long, 100%. long, but it's completely to like have the freedom. Like I'm not like worried about right now because right now is just going to happen. Mm-hmm. I'm like worried about in 10 years. Yeah, absolutely. Because I, I, I want to be, I want to be fucking, I don't want, ever want to work again after fucking 35. In, in mm-hmm. all honesty, I want to set my fucking life up to never have to do anything. I don't want to do ever again. Yeah. You and know, it, it takes that preparation, man. Like, yeah. how old are you again? You're 20, young. 24. Yeah. God, dude, if I was 24 again, that shit. See, it's I'm not weird even because old, I bro. feel old now. Like, I feel, yeah. I feel, me, you, like, I wish I was 18 because if I knew the things I knew now at 18, I would feel so ahead. But now I'm getting to the point where I'm like, fuck, I'm not, like, you, you don't have the excuse that, like, oh, I'm still young. At least yeah. that's how I feel. At, like, even just 24, I feel like I don't have that excuse of, like, Oh, I'm young, so I can still figure it out. It's like extra yeah. pressure to be like, "Oh fuck, gotta like gotta figure something out." Are you the same age too? Yeah. Well, dude, that's the thing, man. Is like, I mean, I, I'm about to be 31. I know so many motherfuckers that are like my age and above that, like, dude. I think that's like the big lie is that people get shit figured out. Nobody knows what the fuck's oh, going on, man. No, I know people's moms that are fucking been divorced for ten years, ain't doing shit, living in a fucking apartment by themselves, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like if that's the way you're gonna live your life, you can live your life. But it's like, what's the fucking measurement? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Of like what's actually good? Because I feel like our generation of people, as opposed to the, all the older motherfuckers, like values have changed, shits changed. What the fuck you want to do with your life? You know what I mean? Like yeah. watching motherfuckers go through divorces and get their fucking houses taken and getting their kids taken and all this shit. It's like. We have the opportunity now to kind of circumvent that bullshit and try and live a different life. And like you're saying, do exactly what the fuck you want to do, how you want to do it. And now there's the means, you know? And I think that that's one of the better things about, like, social media and just shit like that in general. Because I don't really particularly like it. I think it's pretty toxic. And it's there's never been a technology that human beings have created that they didn't fucking abuse. And this is is just as big a weapon as any bomber bullet that's ever been created. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But... Stuff like that, like it gives you the avenue to like do shit like this. Right. And, and motherfuckers will tune in because it's like the world is everywhere now. It's right. not just, you know. Like if I if I just wanted to go be a, a a carpenter or some shit, I wouldn't fucking have Instagram. Fuck no, dude. But I view all the social platforms as my way to set myself up for the rest of my life. Yeah. It's part of the business you model know? at the end of the day. That's like, you, you, know? you told me, didn't you not even have Instagram like a year ago? I created one again <laughs> to start promoting fucking haircuts. Yeah. I liked not having it. Like I, and it sucks because I'm about to get into tattooing. I have to have it, bro. Yeah. But it just, it's like, I don't know. And it would be cool. I don't know if this is like stupid, but if I ever got decently successful to the point where I have like books, you know what I'm saying? As far as like booked out and tattooing yeah. and barbering or whatever, I would legit just like, pay someone else because there's people that will oh, run like a oh, social yeah. media social manager yeah so yeah. i don't ever have to look yeah at right like, run i've done book, i do that run all that shit. exactly i don't want to anymore because fuck everybody else i'm focused on my shit but <laughs> i've yeah. done that for well, plenty of people a lot of motherfuckers out yeah. there that just they want out and they, they can't yet and they don't know fucking how yeah because i could give a fuck less to talk to any motherfucker on there if you don't have my <laughs> fucking phone number i probably don't want to talk to you and if uh, you see me in person and we talk in person that's what means something you know what i mean yep my friends tell me all day long, they're like, dude, you're an old fucking man. And I'm like, and so, dude, I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm cool with how my life is going because it's going how I want it to go. And if that means cutting a lot of the fat, man, like, I I don't give a fuck. Like, I had so many people when I first made Instagram again because I've never had anything else. That's just Instagram. I got rid of Facebook and all that shit. And they're like, oh, I thought you hated me and all that shit. And I was like, what if I did? You know what I mean? Like, what does it fucking matter? Like, I'm back now. You either you want to waste time talking about this or you actually need something. So I don't know, but I'm also, like I said, I'm just a dickhead to begin with, but <laughs> it is what it is. I feel like, like you're like the sugar coach. You're like the nice, you're like the nicest dickhead though. It's a waste of time. You know <laughs> right, what I, mean? yeah. like, I would never be malicious to somebody on the street, but it's like, I hate when people ask me what I think. Cause it's like, I'll tell you, but I'm not going to like beat around the bush about it. 
And people hate that shit. I mean, I'm a hypocrite. I hate when motherfuckers tell me the truth sometimes. If I'm like, yo, do I look swole? They're like, no. I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, thanks for being honest. You know what I mean? But, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, fuck. <laughs> That's great. You have been looking swole, though. You posted a picture the, like, a couple days ago. In Cracker Barrel. <laughs> I was in Cracker Barrel, dude. I was like, this guy's looking fucking jacked. <laughs> Trying, man. The gym's fucking, it's tough, dude. Because, I mean, to me, I feel like a fucking pussy talking to you about this because you know what the fuck's up. But, like, I could go to the gym all day long, but eating just fucking blows. I'm renting oh. a room right now, and I have a kitchenette. I don't even have a stove. And, like, my roommate's cool, but, like, I don't want to be in somebody else's fucking space, like, cooking and shit. So I've been forced to just, like, I go out for dinner pretty much every night. And I'll go to Texas Roadhouse. Oh, let's go, dude. Bro, I'll get the steak and shrimp. And, like, <laughs> it sucks because, like, I go by myself most of the time, so I sit at the bar. They know me, man. They're so cool. Steak and shrimp. I'm like, yeah, I'm pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Let's get it. But, that's yeah. Dude, those fucking cinnamon buns. Those the smack. Shit. Dude. Just- Bring another round, please. It is. It should be illegal, man. They need to go to prison for inventing that shit. <laughs> That's <laughs> like the super size me. <laughs> it is, man. Yeah, dude, I, that shit is so good. You know the worst part about Texas Roadhouse? What's the worst part? It's from Illinois. Like it's it's <laughs> it's a, not it's, even. It's, from, <laughs> it's a Texas themed restaurant, so it's like oh okay, Texas is is you know fucking jokish enough to where they can like. Oh, we'll just put a bunch of pictures of the Texas Rangers on the wall and a bunch of taxidermy and start selling steak. And it's like, I eat there and I'm from Texas. I fucking love it. I'll talk to motherfuckers and I'll be like, you know what, man? Like, their steak's actually pretty good. I'm like, yeah, it's fucking bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like, I could go there and get steak and shrimp, pay $25 for uh, everything, plus a peach tea twice. Or I can go to fucking Longhorn Steakhouse and it's like, that place fucking sucks. I don't I know if you guys eat there. No, I haven't. No, Longhorn Steakhouse fucking blows. I got a buddy that I graduated high school with. I was the first friend that he ever made in PE. And he came out to one of the fucking shows in San Antonio. And he's like a a pretty big dude now at a Texas Roadhouse. And he was like, hey, I'm going to make you guys like some Kublacon Texas Roadhouse shirts. And I, I pulled him aside and I was like, don't fucking jerk me off. How are you going to do this? I'll wear that <laughs> shit all day long. I was like, I'll wear it on stage. We'll do all this shit. And... Yeah, it didn't work out, man, because, like, I guess their corporate was, like, not down with it. And I was like, well, you tell them it's four shirts. Yeah, just <laughs> Why would you make them and yeah. give them to us. If you get fired. We'll say we made them. Yeah, you come on tour with us. I'll pay you. You know what I mean? <laughs> that shit sucks. Damn you, Damn. Texas Roadhouse. Yeah, that's too good. That's probably why I'll go after this. Who fucking knows? <laughs> <laughs> you need to find Matt at <laughs> And in the evening, Nine Texas Roadhouse, your first stop. That's where it's at. I, I keep getting off track. I'm sorry. I no, no, out. that's no worries. But uh, so are you, are you guys an independent band or you have a label? Nah, we're signed. Okay. And to be I real guess, with you, go ahead. I was going to say, I would just like to learn about the fucking music industry a little we're bit. All cocksuckers. I, I, I get that from anything I've ever heard, but yeah. like. You know, not all of them. Our team wasn't cocksuckers. That's why they're our team. But like, I don't know, man. Most people are just fucking snakes. And they're all dodgy as shit. Because it's it's like we talked about with anything else. If there's any money to be made off of creativity, like people are gonna fuck it up. You know what I mean? And it's not probably not so bad in our style of music. Like you got the posters on the walls. Like a lot of these fucking artists, man. I can't imagine the fucking hoops they had to go through and bullets they had to dodge. Well, to like, Frank Ocean, he fucking... Is he independent? He is now, Good. right? Or did he... Re- I have no idea. So basically, he, he was signed to a label. Mm-hmm. So what he did was, he I think he had to put three albums out under this label or some shit. So he... Like to basically put three out, you're out of your... You can leave your contract. So he puts out this his third album, I, I think, could be wrong. Last album of his contract, mm-hmm. puts it out immediately says go fuck yourself label the next day drops this fucking album independent and like fucking goes through the fucking roof (laughs) that's how they get you dude. they'll lock you in like i've had buddies that have gotten signed and it's just like you ever like know a guy that was talking a bunch of shit and he's kind of your buddy but you got another buddy that like heard him talking shit and you know he's gonna beat the fuck out of him and you're like i'm not gonna like warn you Cause you kind of got to figure it out, but like you're about to get fucked. You know <laughs> That's I mean? the record industry. That's record. They'll be like, "Oh yeah, we just signed a blah 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 for six records." I'm like, "Dude, you better sell your kids." Cause like, <laughs> like we're Damn. we've done 
I think on the record label we're on right now, we've done three. And we're pretty juiced out. Like, I tell the guys all the time, I'm like, I don't know how much gas is left in the tank, but, like, we better start wrapping it up. Like, <laughs> let's figure it out. If we had to do three more fucking albums and actually them be good albums, like, we'd be fucked because it's a contract for a reason. Like, they'll, they'll fuck your ass up, and they'll make you release a bunch of shit that sucks. Right. Just so they can try and get their fucking money's worth out of yep. it. Yep. I don't know, man. So, it's what's that? Up. So, you Hold might up. Not- So... You're like a heavy metal band or mm-hmm. like... Yeah, pretty or, much. Like okay. just like heavy shit. Yeah. Heavy shit, are And like I said, that world is like pretty, in my opinion, forgiving. I, I've never been in any other bands. I don't fucking right. know. But like I just hear a bunch of horror stories. And like I said, like I would say that our personal, like as a band, our personal experience and involvement has been like pretty good. Okay. But we also never gave up control. When we first signed to the label we first got on, that was the stipulation. We were like, yo, because labels, a lot of them, they'll take these bands that can't find their fucking dick, and they'll be like, we're going to build them, we're going to help them, Mm -hmm. and we're going to basically own them and sell them. It's like, we didn't need that. You're obviously talking to us because you like our fucking schematic we already did, so how about you let us just fucking do it? And that's what they did, and that's why things have been pretty chill. Like, they basically pay for your marketing, and you just do everything else. If you had to ask me, name five people that work at your label. Couldn't tell you. I don't yeah. know. They don't talk to me. I don't talk to them because we're we're over here in the fucking drop zone. We're in D Day. Do they just go they literally just talk to your manager and you yeah. guys just you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like that's cool. You guys get your fucking money's worth out of our fucking music. You guys help us promote it, push it, sell it. Just let us play our fucking shows, like because like even on the last tour, like I I don't know. It's all in good fun. But like I say some shit on stage that I probably shouldn't be saying, but it's just like it's fun. And if if they were to be like, hey, you shouldn't be doing that. We don't like that. I'd be like, oh, I have a whole dick. You can suck. Like, <laughs> I don't care. Because at the end of the day, if you're the one out there doing it, you're the one that has to put on the shows, you're the one that's actually putting in all the blood work, like, just do it. Yeah. Because, like, at the end of the day, what are you going to remember? That you had a good time doing what you wanted to do regardless? Or are you going to remember that, like, oh, thank God I obeyed my label? You know what I mean? Like, right. whoever got anywhere doing that kind of shit. But I understand for younger bands and dudes on the come up, like, they don't have that luxury. I'm ready to clock out. If they fucking just put a bullet in our band's brain, I'd be like, it's been fun. Like, I did what I wanted to do 10 years ago. I'm good now. I didn't think it was going to go this fucking far. So I'm looking at it from a different perspective. Huh. But I think it's still valid. I know plenty of guys that feel the same way as me, and that's why they do what the fuck they want to do. So so what, what's that, like, you just based on who you are, I feel like maybe you had, like, a completely different, like, didn't affect you as much, but I feel like if it was me and I like started a band and I was the lead vocalist, all this, and you get like that, you finally like signed a record deal or some shit. Like what goes through your head? Like, what are you thinking? Like, are you like, holy fuck, we did it. Or oh, were yeah. you kind of, like, well, you know, what was your experience with that? Did you go to college for a year? Exactly. You, you go to college. I went to community college. Same to me. It's yeah. the same shit. It's like, fuck, I'm in college now. You get through, you're like, this sucks. Yeah, like, this sucks. ain't doing <laughs> shit for me. You know what I mean? Like, to me, a record label, unless you're on, like, fucking something crazy and they're giving you some badass deal, it's essentially just like a bank. They're just going to loan you the shit and get your fucking money and all this. But, yeah, I mean, there's an excitement to it, and I get that, but I would tell more people to just be independent. Because if you, if you have the fucking style, if you have the blueprint, why switch it up for motherfuckers that really aren't going to understand? Because that's something that I feel like a lot of people don't get. I'm pretty disconnected. You know what I mean? And I intentionally disconnect myself from what's going on because, like, that's how you get in your head and you start thinking all this shit. And, like, you just get lost and you become one of those dudes that's 35 and can't fucking stop living in, you know, 2008 and shit. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I think that people should try it on their own because it is tougher, but... That's where you're going to find the real fulfillment. And then there's motherfuckers that would sell their soul for anything. They don't give a shit. And if, like, if that's what you want to do, do it. But a lot of the people in the record industry, in my opinion, that I've met, they are so fucking far disconnected. They don't know what's going on on the ground. You know what I mean? They're out having fucking expensive dinners with label reps and all this other bullshit when it's like, yeah, like, we're trying to just find pizza in a dumpster. You know? Right. You guys don't understand our struggle, and we don't care about yours. So it's like... There's this weird gap that I think needs to get filled with people that are a little bit more in tune with what's going on. And like I said, maybe that's just our experience, but I know a lot of bands that feel the same way. So, 
Interesting. Yeah. Good to hear a little. It's just like so, so interesting just he- hearing like firsthand on like any level, I guess. Because that's, yeah. that's the type of shit that I think everybody like wonders, you know? Because oh, every, every, everyone listens to music. You see all these fucking, all oh, this artist signed to this label, all this shit. And you always just wonder like, man, if they just like actually talked about some shit you know <laughs> like, yeah. like if there was like a major artist that talked how you talk and just didn't give a fuck i mean that's why i feel like a lot <laughs> that's of probably what there with... needs to be to yeah. fucking change some shit well and that's why a lot of them go independent yeah it's like it like i said it to me it's just like college they they pull you in with all this shit like oh it's gonna be fucking wild you, you you've seen fucking euro trip right it's gonna be just like that or whatever you know what i mean and it's like <laughs> it's no, everywhere dude. yeah it's gonna and for some dudes it is cool if that's if that's the experience you have and that's what you get if that's the label you sign to and you fucking love it that's awesome but like i've seen a lot of dudes like get crushed on labels because they'll they'll sign shit and it doesn't work out or like this happened to us on our first label we signed to a label that just put us on the back burner, bro. And now we've got a choke chain on us. Before we were free, but now it's like you got a choke chain on you and you have to sit over there. Right. You know what I mean? As opposed to just being able to at least navigate it ourselves, even if it's incorrect. So I don't know. I would just tell people to be kind of like, just do your research, man. And don't don't believe every motherfucker that tells you something nice. Because these motherfuckers get paid to tell you, what you want to hear. And then as soon as you sign, they don't yeah, give a fuck. Yeah, they don't fuck. give a fuck, dude. Because my whole thing is like, you could base it just, it's like dudes that go to the strip club. And they're like, oh man, like, this chick really likes me. It's like, she's getting paid. You know what I'm saying? Is she really dude. your fucking friend? Like, you right. gonna, you guys going out and going to Cheesecake Factory? Like, <laughs> going to that, Texas Roadhouse? Yeah, that's not what it is. But people get so fucking seduced by just like a little bit of just like gassing up. You know, and that shit's, it's just dangerous, dude. It's, the whole thing's dangerous, but that's why, like you're saying, you just gotta, you gotta know yourself, you gotta be real with what you're doing, and you gotta know exactly where the fuck you wanna go, and how you are gonna get there, regardless of who the fuck's around you, because not everybody that is helping you has your best interest in mind, and that, no. everybody's dealt with that shit. Kind of like the same, like, with social media, where it's like, most people watching your shit don't like you fuck yeah dude. This, <laughs> I, <get> all. <laughs> I have people that were apply to my stories just to tell me how i'm wrong about <laughs> shit and i'm like why why do you even bother dude, man? 90 like, percent of your stories are you sitting on the fucking toilet what do they got to even say <laughs> they, these are motherfuckers that it wouldn't matter what is happening they're just gonna <laughs> say shit and that's i don't know man and this brings me to a whole nother thing i don't want to keep dragging on different topics and shit but it's like I feel like people are over across the board, like, and I think social media has a huge problem with it, is, like, people are just generally becoming softer. They're, they're, I don't know too many motherfuckers that are younger than me that can really take criticism or even open to criticism, you know? And then you think about these fucking brolics that were their fucking granddads that, like, built the railroads and shit and, like, (laughs) spit in each other's faces. And, you know, it's just, like, these people cannot, it's a whole different, world now and i genuinely think that most people aren't built for what's happening right now that's why you got so many people that are depressed confused strung out fucking killing themselves and shit because it's like yeah there's not a in a world where there's everything how do you find what you have to live for because like purpose is the most important thing which is why like we said when the pandemic hit and they gave us the call to like yo you're not torn anymore I went and started working at Kroger. Not because I necessarily needed money, but because I'm just like, if I don't have a reason to wake up, if I don't have a purpose, I'm going to have a problem. You know what I mean? And through fucking COVID and all that shit, man, like suicide, like skyrocketed. And it's just because like motherfuckers get lonely. They fucking need people. They need a purpose. They need something to live for throughout their day. Or it's like, it ain't going to be very good. And I think that that carries over in general to just like, just everybody now, man. It's getting so hard. The world is so oversaturated with people. It just got fucking nothing going on. And that's yeah. a sad fucking thing, man. Yeah, it is. It, and that's why I always, like, on here, I try and always, like, I think it was, like, the first or second episode, but I was just, like, I obviously talk about, like, creative, like, fo- photo, video type shit. Mm-hmm. But I'm, like, I don't give a fuck what it is you do. 
just do something that you actually want to fucking do. Yeah. If you love to fucking go clock in at fucking Kroger every day, you actually are like, I love this shit. Yeah. Then fuck yeah, yeah I worked with those motherfuckers. That sounds great. And it's like, that That shit will get you stoked too, because it's like, I mean, there's, there's a whole thing. Like, some of the poorest people that we've all ever met, they're happy, bro, because they don't require much. They don't they don't care about all the other bullshit mm-hmm. attached to yeah. it. But then you got all these motherfuckers that have fucking everything, but they half-ass their whole life. They half-ass everything they do. All the stuff that they want to do, they're just too much of a pussy to go out and do it, or this and that, and they just get too hung up. And like you said, man, like finding finding your reason to exist or finding your reason to be creative and actually just like do it and not just be like dance around it is important, but it's like, I think it's just getting tougher and tougher for people. Yeah. Yeah. And this place is dope, but it's like, I'm fully cool with just always moving, always being like, I mean, I ain't got no, so how long do you think you're going to be in Tampa for then? Just fucking God knows, bro. I have no idea. However long it takes you to figure out how to tattoo. A hundred percent. And that's why I like, I'm a hypocrite because we talk about like all the long game, like, my long game is just to be trying to do things that I can find success in that I enjoy. But it's like when it comes to that kind of shit, I'm like, bro, I don't fucking know. Right. Could be fucking six months. It could be six years. I have no fucking yeah. idea. But I don't know if it's a place that ends up being pretty badass. Like it could be the spot because like yeah. everywhere I've lived, I've loved to live. But also like I've always kind of found reasons to like go somewhere else. But I genuinely think that's because of touring, man. Because, like, I've told people all the time that, like, I started touring when I was, like, maybe 20. And it'll it'll fuck with your brain chemistry, like, straight up. Because, like, you get so used to just, like, oh, I'm going to be gone in a month. Shit doesn't matter. Like, oh, your chick fucking breaks up with you while you're on tour. Well, it's like, well, there's five more that are going to be there tonight. Like, who gives a shit? And it really, that's what I'm saying. These dudes get lost in, like, who they think they are doing this mm-hmm. shit. It'll fuck you up, man. And I genuinely think like a lot of the reasons for me personally, why I'm so nomadic, it was induced because of touring. Like it's hard to stay settled. You know what I mean? I can see a lot that of motherfuckers for sure. like that, but I genuinely think that that's like part of it. Cause think about how many people never like leave. They don't care to go explore places. And it's like you said, if that's what you want to do, dude, that's all good and well. But if you have the opportunity, like go for I it. I mean, that's the whole premise behind fucking left home yeah. the left home podcast like 100 percent, 100 percent. like re real or like metaphorically like leaving moving out of your fucking hometown you can always come back or just like doing that uncomfortable thing you can always go back yeah but like it's nice to have a home and it base. doesn't matter what the fuck it is Mm-mm. like for some people that leaving home is going to apply at fucking kroger if they're actually passionate about it go right ahead dude but, fucking power to him. Yeah. Fucking A. So, like, out of all the cities and places you've been, what's been some of, like, your favorite places or, like, a place you would want to go back to? Well, all right. So, mm-hmm. coolest place ever was Tokyo. Okay. Which, like, Tokyo was sick because it's, it's the most otherworldly place I've ever been. Because, like, you think about, like, Oh shit, man! I'm gonna go vacation in like London. It's like, yo, London's not that different from here. Like, it's different, but like culturally, nah. You know. Okay. And then you go to Japan, and it, you just get flipped upside down. And I'd never been in a country where there were people as short as me with black hair everywhere. Like, I went with three fucking white dudes, and there were people stopping to take pictures with them and shit because they were like, "Oh, are you guys baseball players?" It's like, <laughs> nah, <laughs> just not quite playing music. And then they look at me and just be like, "Ugh." You know, I remember telling the dudes because, like, you guys ever, like, heard, like, the hierarchy of Asians, right? No. Like, no. Like, Asians hate each other, apparently. Which okay. I don't fucking know. You know, but I'm I'm half Asian. I'm half Filipino. And we were over there in Japan, and I was hanging out with these three Japanese dudes who were, like, kind of like our chaperones because we can't drive over there. We can't even speak the fucking language or do shit. So I was sitting there talking with them. And I just told him, I was like, yeah, man, it's really cool to, like, be over here and, like, see how things go. Because I am I was like, I'm Filipino, so it's kind of, you know, neat. I'm, like, not too far from that. And they all got fucking quiet, like, legitimately. I was like, what the fuck, man? Like, what did I do, you know? <laughs> yeah. And one of the guys, he's just like, hmm. he's like, let me tell you something. He's like, the only people over here that are Filipinos are prostitutes and janitors. 
Like, that's literally what he said. And I was just like, I mean, you're kind of knocking their hustle, but like, <laughs> yeah. whatever, dude. Like, I, I'm neither one of those, but I'm over here, like, trying to entertain people. And yeah, it was just, there's just kind of like weird shit over there. Like, Bardo, the other guy in the shop, uh, he's been to Japan a couple times with his band, and he was saying that he was like with his Japanese chaperones, and they would see like Chinese students like walking on the road, and they'd start like, in Japanese, like yelling at him, being like, fucking go home, pieces of shit. Like, stuff away. If you did that over at, here, at him, people would like stand up. No, at the Chinese, like, students that oh. were in Japan. Cause, like, Japan's super, like, homogenous. I think that's like 95 or 96% of all Japanese people on planet Earth still fucking live on those islands. So it's like, they're fucking about their shit. Like, you can't just, becoming a citizen over there is like fucking impossible. Like, you can come work over there for a minute, but once you've exhausted that, they're like, hey, get the fuck out. You know what I mean? If you're white, you can't get tattooed over there. Like, there's, like, racist shit that's, like, because it's all the same over there, I feel like it's viewed differently, but there's just a lot of shit that if it was that way over here, people would be fucking losing their fucking minds. Yeah. But I think because they are so culturally, like, dug in, they have the say. Who the fuck do you think they give a fuck about the small minority of people over there that might complain about it? Like, Who's going to change it? Everybody's Japanese there, so who gives right. a shit? But Japanese, like Japan, is the coolest place. My favorite place was Barcelona, Spain. Okay. Because every time we go, we play the same fucking venue. Have you guys ever seen Barcelona? No. It's built on a fucking grid. So it's literally like, it's just squares, the whole thing. So you can literally look down a street and see the whole city. It's fucking nuts. Damn. And so there's this little bike shop. I'd shout it out if I knew the name of it, but I don't know the fucking name. We'd always go there. It's like a two-block walk from the venue. We get there early. Everybody plans that, like, we're in Barcelona, we're renting bikes, and the whole day we just ride bikes all up and down Barcelona. And it's, like, shit like that where it's, like, if all these motherfuckers that are just like, no, man, I love living in fucking blah, blah, blah. It's like, you can do that, but, like, you should go ride bikes in Barcelona. Right. If you have the opportunity to do that shit because it will change your whole fucking life. Even if you're convinced it won't. Like, I I didn't start eating rice until like a couple of years ago. I thought rice was fucking disgusting. I'd never tried it. And then I was on an airplane. And, you know, you get so hungry that they bring you your little plate of food. And I was like, I'm starving. I'm just going to eat this shit. Turns out I love rice. <laughs> and it's like, dude, I would have gone my whole life getting get, people trying to give me rice. I'd be like, fuck you. Is it because you like, had shitty rice, though? Because I, I grew up, I, I grew up with it. my mom making like that I instant rice, yeah. and I was like, "This is gross." And I learned how to make rice, and I'm like, "I could put just salt on this and eat a fucking bowl of rice now." Dude, my aunt straight up stunted me when I was a kid because I, I fucking hate eating vegetables. I've like grown to like it, but she thought it'd be the wise idea to like start hiding shit in my food. So she'd like <laughs> make me mac and cheese or some shit, and then put like carrot bits in it. And I'm like, "You fucking cocksucker! Like you don't think I can <laughs> taste this shit? Like you don't think I know the difference?" And so I was always on, like, fucking gorilla mode. Like, when she'd bring me my food and be, like, picking through it and fucking finding all the landmines. And I was like, fuck this bitch, man. Like, why are you you're fucking with me? And so the whole rest of my life growing up, I was, like, just like, oh, is that zucchini? Yeah, fuck no. Like, I'm not <laughs> eating any of this shit. shit. I'm not trying any of this shit. But I ate the rice out of pure desperation. And I, I was like, this shit's pretty fucking good, yeah. you know? Now I eat rice pretty much every day with, like, different meals and shit. But it's stuff like that. If, if I never would have been introduced to it in a way where I just, like, kind of had to do it, I think, personally, it should be mandatory in this country that the government should pay for a week's vacation for every fucking motherfucker. Once they turn 18, you can go anywhere, cannot go in the United States. You have to go to another country. You have some kind of ambassador program or something. That would like, be great. I feel like we'd have a lot of motherfuckers that would have a little bit better perspective. Because... I think all it takes is like one experience to completely change your life. Absolutely. And you'll like, there's so many people that are going to sit, sit in the same thing their whole life because they'll never try that experience. Yeah. yeah. And if they fucking did, they'd be like, Oh damn, this is, this is great. Yeah. Let's go I mean, do more of this. But then again, the government doesn't want that. Fuck no, man. They want, the government wants every kid to fucking sit at home. Oh, boy, have to use their, started. have to use their health care. <laughs> To fucking go to the doctor because all they do is play fucking video games, yeah. drink Mountain Dew, and eat fucking Cheetos. So straight up, <laughs> Fuck the government man. And, and I need like a fucking Vax card now just to even go over there and shit and all that <laughs> stuff. It's so dumb. They're just making shit so fucking unreasonably hard to the point where it's like, 
Just, I think that, and I'm not one of those people, I'm not going to even talk about this shit like I'm like super versed on it, but it's like, from what I see, like, I wish that the government would just fucking leave everybody alone. Like, fuck off. Like, we tell you every fucking time what we want, which is just like, just let us do whatever the fuck Yeah, give us some healthcare. Like, whatever the fuck helps us not just die, but like everything else, like, you saw, like, the shit, I guess maybe it was, like, the IRS or something can now, like, if there's any transaction... That Over goes $600. Your, yeah, it's like, what do we need? Who, you know who that's going to fuck? Everybody? Yeah. <laughs> the regular fucking people. Yeah. Because everybody else is, like, cool with, like, oh, we'll just fucking buy our way out of it or whatever. And it's like, dude, please tell me how that helps anybody. Like, I'm sure they have some fucking huge thing sitting in Washington, D.C. to tell us how this is what we fucking need to do and the overlords got to fucking let us know. But it's like, dude, most people... Just want to eat good food, fuck, and like have a decent life. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's really not that fucking just the simple things. I feel like most people want, like, they don't even want to be like rich. They want financial security where you don't have to worry, like, oh, can I pay my hospital bill? Yeah. You know, like, you just want enough money to where you can enjoy life and not have to worry about like bills and shit. Yeah. Where you can fucking pick your head up out of the weeds and just be like, damn, that's the sun. I can enjoy that for five minutes. Yeah. And not be stressing. Think about all these motherfuckers that, like, I don't know, man. I knew this one dude. His dad, like, n- literally, and it's hard for me to even fathom. Like, he never took a day off. Like, he worked every single day of his life. And it's like, I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. But, like, I have to have, like, a day off. But I'm spoiled in that sense. You know what I'm saying? Because I've had days off. It's like, people don't understand, I feel like, the true, like, dynamics of other people's struggles and how actually fucked up a lot of people's lives are. Mm-hmm. And I, I get kind of caught up cause I'm one of those dudes. It's like, Oh man, like work your way out of it. Like nobody, I don't think the government should fucking come in and fucking baby you. I don't think that, you know, you should try and bend society's knee to get you to fucking feel better about your shit situation. Like you should try harder and do better because at the end of the day, the only person that really gives a fuck about you is yourself and if you're not willing to care about yourself and try and do a little bit better, why the fuck should I? Yeah. You know how we all get fucking just pillaged on these fucking taxes every year? And for what? You think I want to pay more of that shit? Like, I don't work for my own fucking <laughs> yeah. money. Uh, dude, the taxes is just... The only it's pe- like a tax on the only, tax. The only, so like, it's only going to get worse. Too. That I kind of, like, feel bad for is, like, <laughs> kids that are grown up in, like, situations where they are not given a single ounce of knowledge to, like, Absolutely. succeed in life. And then they, you know, turn 18 or, or basically their whole teenage years are very much like they're on themselves. Mm-hmm. And then they're sent into the real world with like, all right, have fun, you know, and their parent like, whereas everybody else, like, I feel like if you're given, you know, the normal upbringing of like, you know, opportunity and a little bit of knowledge here. Yeah, you should pr- figure it, figure it the fuck out. Like, do some do just go do it. Stop bitching. Yeah. But then I like I always see like. You know when you see like a six year old and they're like obese, mm-hmm. I'm like those fucking parents should be in jail. Absolutely, that's child dude. abuse. Yeah, like you are setting. You cannot like. I, I'm all for like being like loving yourself and being happy, but you cannot fucking tell me that letting a six year old kid weigh a hundred fucking pounds is not gonna fucking probably ruin their life. Yeah, and it's one of those things too, man. And this is something like. I, I think about, like, as far as, like, you're, you're saying with the kid like that, like, you think if the kid had a choice, like, I mean, the kid has a choice, essentially, a little bit, but it's like... But the knowledge isn't there to yeah, know. And especially if you're brought up that way, and it's like, dude, this kid's probably addicted to sugar. This yep. kid's addicted to, like, fucking all the stuff that makes our food bad. This kid was born on it, you know? Yeah. So it's like, it's hard to see out of that. But at the same time, like, because I'll see, like, pretty big people walking around, and I think about it, and I'm just like... We're in this weird time, like you're saying, where everyone's like, dude, you just got to accept everything. And I'm like, no, you don't. You don't have to accept shit. And I hate this idea that, like, oh, man, like, nah, people people do some pretty, like, harmful things to themselves. But it's just like, that's just going to happen. It's like, why should I take that as a fucking, why should, and why should you put that against me as far as, like, oh, I'm a bad person if I disagree? Like, dude, like, I see some of these people walking around that just, like, they're killing themselves. And it's just one of those things where it's like, do you think if they were given a choice, they're like, hey, I could snap my finger right now and you would shed all that weight, you would shed all that, 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 you know, 
like the, the health mental concerns, doubt, everything. Yeah. yeah, that comes with it that got you to this point. You think that they'd be like, nah, I'm, I actually do love myself the way I'm. And it's like, Fuck maybe no. they would. And if they do, that's fucking awesome. That's cool. But it's like, dude, like, I don't know, man. I think the whole idea of what's happening right now with like normalize this, normalize that. It's like there's a reason that a lot of things aren't and shouldn't be normalized because it's like it takes effort. You know, if everything's just normal and everything's just like, oh, well, that's just the way it is. It's like, then what is there to work for? What's there to work towards? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If everybody's just down to just like eat all this garbage and slowly kill themselves, like why am I the cocksucker if I don't want to be a part of that? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it's like you're saying with the kid, it's like that's not the kid's fault, bro. That's bad fucking parenting. Yeah. Like a little kid up. doesn't know that eating more food is going to like make them fat. No, they're just, they, you know, I don't know. Maybe man. in like early teenage years, they start to like correlate like, oh, okay. okay. Well, before that, like I see that all shit all the time. And I'm like, you're just setting your kid up for a fucking rough, like teenage in childhood. Well, and I think and just people, life. people don't think about the like, they're like, oh, it's just like, it's just the physical weight. It's like, bro, that comes with so much mental and emotional weight that will re- rewire somebody's brain. You know what I mean? Like when you're pushing someone's body like that, especially at a young age to a completely unnatural state, that's going to have some kind of like ramifications on them up here too. Cause they're fucking growing anyways. It's hard enough being a kid that, that doesn't have to struggle with weight issues. You know what I mean? Let alone fucking adding that weight on top of them. You know what yeah. I mean? It's fucked up. And I mean, I had friends growing up that were a little bit overweight and shit like that. And they get fucking mm-hmm. teased and shit. They feel like fucking shit about themselves. And, like, I never really had weight problems. Like, I, that's something I've never really struggled with. So I, like, kind of tried to, like, stay in my lane or just be like, yo, man, like, you are good. Like, chill. You're good the way you are. You know what I mean? But it's like, then I'll see them, like, after high school, like, a few years later, and they're fucking shredded. And it's like, <laughs> you know what, dude? You fucking, you took the right route. Yeah. You didn't fucking just sit in it and be like, yeah, you know, I'm just this is just the way it is. It's like, you have absolutely have the ability to change it. That's why I don't excuses are just fucking they can only take you so far dude and i hate that it's like taboo to say that but it's true man it's like for every motherfucker that went out to the gym every day and did it and is now fucking just like loving themselves truly for who they are and not even who they are who they fucking became who they realized they could be that shatters that whole theory you know what i mean that Mm -hmm. like Oh, I can't do it. It's like, dude, you can honestly do fucking anything. It's just a matter of willpower. And I feel like a lot of people, like we talked about earlier, they're just they're just low on willpower, man. Straight up. And I don't think it's necessarily even all their fault. It's just the way things are going right now, man. Yeah. Bullying and body shaming works. <laughs> it works. But <laughs> no, like you were saying, like yeah. the world's so soft these days. It's like it's hard. You can't like if you try to fucking joke about it with someone, they fucking Get all offended and shit and whatnot. Well, dude, so. Even even talking to you guys right now on this, there was a couple of times where I was talking where I got like hung up because I'm like, if somebody's watching this, I what, am I gonna fucking, how am I gonna make them feel? Because I still need to think about how they feel, but at the same time, right. it's like, dude, like sometimes the most critical events, like you're talking about, one thing that can happen in your life can be a negative thing. It can be something that burns you to your fucking soul, but because of that, you got up off your fucking ass and you did it. Yeah, you know what I mean. And not everybody reacts the same. Not everybody does that kind of shit. But it's like just letting people do it, I don't think is the right way to go. No. You know what I mean? No. That's This is something crazy. Dude. I don't want to like commandeer the conversation or something. But it's like something that I saw earlier. And I mean, we're talking about it. I kind of want to see what you guys' opinion is on yeah. it. It's like the places in big cities where they have like, uh, I guess they started out in like, I guess the Vancouver, Canada area. And they're starting to come down the West Coast. But, like, areas where people can go in, they're, like, safe shoot-up spaces where you can literally walk into a building, you sit at a cubicle, they give you all the stuff, clean shit, and you can shoot up your drugs. They have people there that if you OD and fall out of your fucking chair are trained to, like, get you, lift your head up, do whatever the fuck they got to do to, you know, get you back to life so you don't OD, and then you go on your fucking way. And people are hailing this as, like, this is so compassionate. This is like how things need to be done. And I'm just like, Fuck. I don't, I don't know the answer, but I don't think that's it. Yeah. And it's like, 
Like, what do you get? Like, so I kind of like, I definitely have like an opinion on like the drug. Like my dad is like a drug addict, alcoholic for my entire life. Yeah. Like, but he was, he was in my life up until four years ago. And now I haven't said a word to him in I think almost four years now. Mm -hmm. But so my whole child at all it was, was like him in and out of jail, him in and out of rehab, all for drugs and alcohol. And as I kind of like, as a kid, you don't really like, you don't like know, like you don't really know what's going on. But then as you get into high school and stuff, you start to like learn a little more and like really grasp like, oh, this. And I remember we would always go to uh, like go visit him and like rehab or whatever. And they would have like all the families and the, and the patients all in a room and they have somebody come talk and all this shit. And they would always talk about how like addiction is like a disease mm -hmm. and all that, which, which yes, like I, I'm not going to say it's not, but I also from a very young age, I always thought addiction as much as it can be a disease. You're telling me that my dad has five kids and a wife a wife that's been with him since she was like 17 years old, but he's going to choose to do drugs for 20 straight years with all of this. I'm like, that's not an addiction in my opinion. That's a choice. Yeah. You get to come home every day for 25 years to five kids and a wife while you're spending your entire year, you make $100,000 one year and the next year you make 10 because you spent all the money on drugs and alcohol. So I see it as that where like I've in the like rehab facilities, I see so much like enabling in my opinion. Yeah. And I, that, in that thing you were talking about. So you could, so, so the government or whoever's running these programs clearly has money and resources that they want to put towards addicts. Mm-hmm. Fucking strap them in a room and make them fucking detox. Yeah. If you actually want to help. I understand the whole clean needles. Yeah, they don't want to You know, disease. all this. You think they give a fuck? They're going to. They they're they're the probably going to get this clean needle yeah. because they know it's available. Yeah. And then tomorrow morning, guess where they're shooting up? Under the fucking bridge. Yeah. So, like, I see, like, my whole life I've seen all these resources go towards all this bullshit that in my opinion is very much just like enabling and very much not like just the cold hard, like stop being a fucking bitch. And like the amount of guys I've seen come like all my dad's friends growing up, alcoholics, addicts, everybody, all, like every f male figure that was like in my life for like my whole childhood that like my dad would bring in all those types of people. Everyone around them, enablers. Yeah. Almost 100%. And that's all I see from the government, all the programs, everything. All it is is enabling. The government, one, because they don't want the best for, for those types of, for that types of people anyway. So I think, yeah, they can cover it up as like, oh, you're getting them a clean, like, it's clean. That's the basis of it is it's clean. Yeah. But, no. Like... I, I I would say I agree 0% with that. Yeah. <laughs> I, th I think that's fucked up. I don't think they should be promoting that type of drug use. I mean, but like, I don't know. Yeah. I'm definitely not fucking with that. So it's like, it's such a fucking complicated thing. Cause it's like, in some ways I'm like, is it just out of pure exhaustion where you're like, we cannot get these people to stop. And it's like, it's like you said, and this is something that I don't know if people necessarily consider, especially people sitting behind a computer screen or a TV, like a phone being like reading the comments about all the shit when they see this, where it's like, these motherfuckers do not care to stop. Even if they know that it's self-destructive and they are like doing it, they're just like, I think people kind of just want to leave it out of their minds that like people can't just be pieces of shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like sometimes people are just pieces of shit and they just want to do bad things to themselves and to others because it's just what's in their fucking brain. And I'm not saying that being a drug addict makes you a piece of shit, but it's one of those things like you really got to question, like you're saying, you know, with like your father and stuff like that, where are your priorities at? Right. Like, what are you doing with yourself? You know what I mean? And I think, I think you're exactly right as far as like enabling in the name of like, like care. 
Yeah. Because it's like, I know if it was my fucking kid, let's say that we were all in the same room and I had my fucking son comes in and my son's strung out. And I'm like, well, the caring thing I can do is help him. I'll help him shoot up. Or I can be like, dude, no. Like, yeah. we're going to fucking help you out. And if the government's supposed to help everybody or supposed to give a shit, like, I don't think allowing people to continue these damaging lifestyles is like the way to go. And I mean, we're talking about this right now. It's obviously like a huge fucking argument right now. Cause it's like, dude, like, are we taking, I don't know if people are questioning it that think it's such a good idea, but like, are we taking steps backwards? Like, is it, is it okay to be like, Hey, this isn't it. Like, I know that you're trying to be good and you're trying to help people, but it's like watching somebody in front of you OD and it's like, Oh, well I got him. I'll get him this time. You know what I mean? It's like, to desensitize yourself to the point where it's like, these motherfuckers I see stand around in Circle K. Yep. I, dude, I look at them, especially the women, and I'm just like, dude, like, it hurts, bro. It's not like we're all sitting here just being like, oh, you know, just part of it. It's like, that shit sucks to see, and it fucking blows, but it's like, what are we supposed to do about it? I don't think anybody has the answer when it comes to, like, addiction. And the, the whole thing when people say, like, oh, man, the war on drugs, like, the drugs won. 100%. Yeah. I've heard people say that over and over. Trucks, hey. And it's like, now we're just trying to do damage control, man. Yeah. And I think what you said too, man, the government. I, I agree with the decriminalization. Oh, yeah. But ha- but heavily regulated because you can't you can't let the dude Would you decriminalize everything you're talking about? Like, I, I don't know enough to like really say that, but I would say just, I couldn't tell you like which ones and stuff, but I think, oh, so, you, so this person's doing drugs under a fucking or is gets a, arrested for possession at a bus stop. Yeah. Should they go to jail? Probably not unless you can tie it back to like distribution. Mm. I would say distribution, yes, cuz you're obviously a huge problem, problem yeah. in the problem. Yeah. But when it comes to this person having drugs on them and using I would say yes, decriminalize that, but maybe you're already so you were going to put resources into putting them in jail, put them resources yeah. into what are getting the statistics them help, too? It's like one know? person that spends a year in like prison is like X amount of dollars off the fucking bottom line. Yeah, that we all have to pay for, and it's like shit like that. We live in a state now where you can get weed, and I think that's one of the craziest things. Is like I don't know, I don't keep up with it, so I'm probably a dipshit for bringing this up. But it's like, are they are there still motherfuckers in jail for weed? Because if you guys are fucking, Fuck now you're selling it right now, and little fucking Jimmy can go in here and <laughs> go have any blunt rap he wants and all this shit now, but you got a guy that two years ago or five years ago got caught with a dime bag, and now he's just fucked having to live on a twin bed cot for the rest of his fucking life. Like Literally. Yeah, that's fucked. Yeah, like, dude, it's... Yeah. it's. And then you got, like, our neighbors over here having a party, just smoking in the driveway <laughs> the other day. And I'm like, in my head, I'm thinking, I'm like, this is just wild, that it's like cigarettes, like... It's, yeah. it's almost more like you can just smoke weed anywhere now and like you can't smoke cigarettes. Mm-hmm. It's fucking well, dude, I crazy. Think weed's fucking cigarettes are worse. You yeah, they I mean? are. But it's like crazy seeing that. Like, oh, yeah. The shit. It's just casual now. Mm-hmm. I don't I'm not like I would support like the re- the legalization of marijuana completely. Oh, yeah. It's just crazy. Still it blows my mind when I just like when you like see it and you're like, that's not illegal. Like yeah, they can dude, just do that. To be in, like, small-town Oklahoma and past dispensaries with just huge neon weed leaves. It's like, oh. just because I, dude, I've never, I've never smoked weed. I've never drank alcohol. Mm-hmm. I've never done shit. So I feel like I kind of have a weird You don't perspective. drink or smoke I've at all? I've never had alcohol in my life. Just I've Dr. Never, Peppers? That's it, bro. Just <laughs> Dr. Peppers. I just keep it real, dude. Damn, that's crazy. But, oh, yeah. I, yeah, I've never done any of that shit. But, dude, I'll tell you right now, like, I am super fucking pro-weed, like, I had an ex-girlfriend way back, and she had uh, epilepsy, and her little brother had epilepsy, and they were out in Louisiana, and this was way fucking back. He got on, like, some kind of, like, medical trial or some shit where they were trying to see the effects of, like, cannabis and all this stuff with epilepsy, and apparently, like, the whole time he was doing the trial and they were getting the information, like, motherfucker, he didn't go to school. His epilepsy was so bad. Like, he was actually functional, was able to, like, fucking, like, all, everything was in the green. Everything was going good. His fucking seizures were down. Then they got the information they wanted, and they were like, yeah, well, you know, it's not legal, so enjoy it. And he went back to fucking just being fucked up. And I'm like, I get that yeah. if it's for the long game of just, like, we're slowly trying to build a case as to why this needs to be legal and how this can help people. But I'm like, you motherfuckers know that this is helping yeah. people. 
And yet, this it's just the old heads. Yeah, and they're still all having fucking to fucking is. pay for this other medication that's probably got side effects, could be dangerous, whatever the fucking case is. And like, they just don't give a fuck. You don't smoke, don't drink, never have. No. What's that like going on fucking tour, not uh-huh, drinking and smoking? That's got to be a. It's it's a tr- I've a been different offered. Everything, yeah, bro. And it's like. I kind of like come up with the whole tagline with it, like, oh, I'm boring. I don't do that shit. I appreciate the offer. I'm always very gracious to people because it's like, I got motherfuckers that, you know, they're my buddies and they smoke weed every day. And I know for them to want to share their weed with somebody is like, that's cool, you know? But to me, it's just something like, it's never been an interest of mine. Also, like, I have this real deep kind of like fixation with like, I don't like feeling out of control. Like, I don't like roller coasters. I don't like driving too fast. Like, I'm pretty fucking boring when it comes to it because, like, I just don't want to leave my lane. And it's it's kind of to your story, too. Like, dude, my mom was, like, and I, you know, I loved my mom. Like, she's, she's gone now and shit. I'm not talking shit. But, like, she had it. She was going through it. You know what I'm saying? For her whole fucking life. And she was a drug addict to the point where, like, she was, like, disabled on government help, like, stuff like that. Like, I watched her fucking disintegrate, man. And, uh, yeah, from a super early age, like, I kind of fixated it in my brain that I was just like, yeah, I'm not interested. Like, that's something I don't want to do. And not for the sense of, like, I was, like, some goody two-shoes. I was still out throwing rocks at cars and shit. But, like, I never <laughs> wanted to be that guy, even though I was getting offered, like, hey, you want to go smoke a cigarette? Like, I was like, nope, because I would remember, dude, like, I, we had this old song where I would, I, like, the one of the lyrics I was comparing the way that my mom used to cough. She smoked fucking Marlboro 100s. She was fucking out there just doing it. You know what I mean? Every fucking day. Like the Reds? Oh, yeah. Oh, straight cowboy killers. That's what I'm saying, dude. <laughs> and it would literally, you remember those old, like, Folgers coffee cans? Oh, yeah. yeah. And you fill them with change, and then you shake that motherfucker up? That's what her coughing sounded like. And I would watch her just, like, fucking, <laughs> just, like, I was like, damn, mom, like, come on. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You fucking not do this shit. And ever since then, yeah, I was just like, not with it, not interested. And everybody's been pretty chill with it. Like, a lot of my ex-girlfriends and shit have always been like, oh, well, you know, if you ever want to fucking drink, like, we can drink or you can smoke or whatever. And I'm just like, not yet. Like, I got I got bigger titties to suck right now, and then I'll figure it out. Because, like, dude, it sounds great. I love recliners. I have, like, a, like a very deep love for recliners. <laughs> okay. So it's like, yeah, dude, nothing sounds better than coming home at the end of the day, just fucking getting on your recliner, having a Dr. Pepper, and probably smoking some weed. And I'm like, yeah, that would be good. And everybody that knows me is like, yo, you should, you're the kind of guy that needs to smoke weed because I'm always in my own head. I'm always doing that shit. And I'm just like, when it happens, it'll happen. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, I just don't, I don't believe in forcing shit on people. I don't believe in any of that kind of stuff. So it's like, we'll see where the road takes us. But yeah, I've never done it. I mean, do you guys both smoke weed and shit? Like, I work at a dispensary. That, so. and he, he, fucking, yeah. he is. Yeah. He's probably like, like one of the highest functioning potheads. Where he's probably been high, what every <laughs> every day since no. you were sixteen. I mean, he's like fucking killing him over here. Like, <laughs> probably seventeen. Yeah, I would say. So like, sit, like I've been smoking weed for like seven years. But do you like working at a dispensary? I, I just like got to be pretty fucking like, dude. It's been popping right now, right? I've worked there. Th- for three days now and oh you just started yeah i I just started (laughs) thank you but yeah dude so far it's been great like fuck yeah dude. like the days go by quick they gave me free weed i mean so shit yeah the one thing for me with like it was more for drinking was like my whole from whatever middle school up until i don't remember when i first drank but up until then I was like, oh, I'm never drinking. But it was 100% because, like, my dad. Like, I saw what he did. Your childhood can affect Yeah, so I saw that forever. I'm like, why would I ever do that? Like, don't need that. But then, like, when I got a little older, what I realized was, in my opinion, like, most social events or whatever, like, I I think is better when you're drinking. Like, it's just more fun. Mm -hmm. Not in, like, a I need to drink way, but it's just... I think the reality is it's probably more fun. Absolutely. And for me, I was like, why would I let my dad, who I don't talk to, I don't really want much to do with. He's not my life. Why do I let his decisions affect my life now? And so I'm like, I can drink with my friends. Like, and then 
not do it for another month Mm -hmm. and then drink with my friends again when I want to. Why would I never do this thing that in my opinion will probably make me have more fun just because my dad, who I don't even want to like associate with. Yeah. Why would I let his decision make like be the reason I'm doing something? I want my life to be so far away from his, his life that it's not even like a thought. And so that's like part of the reason why I was like, yeah, why can't I drink? Cause before yeah. I was like, I can't because I can't like let that happen to yeah, like you me. don't want to turn into and I'm like, wait, parents. but that's not me. Yeah. I can do whatever the fuck I want. I get hung up on that too, man. Where it's like, I know I'm not my mom. Cause like, I'm just going to get hundred percent real for a second, but it's like, like my mom, she had like bipolar disorder, like manic depression. Like I would assume schizophrenia, like all kinds of just shit. I'm fucking mortified of that shit, dude. Because, like, like, I don't know. Depression's extremely real. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. I've had my whole band, I've had ex-girlfriends be like, yo, you have depression. Like, just because you're fucking cracking jokes all the time and you're, like, high-functioning. I mean, a lot of it's times, like, it's, like, the happiest people. Yeah, and you know? it's, like, but I, the thing is, like, I've always kind of, like, I guess done the opposite. Like, lived in the sense of where it's, like, no, I'm going to, like, not think about it. And just keep going because, like, the more I think about it, the more I slip into, like, damn, am I, like, becoming my mom? You know, and that's, like, a real thing. But it's, like, then I think about it and I'm, like, dude, where she was at at that age compared to where I'm at, it's, like, we're different people, man. It's, like, you we're could just never completely even get fucking there. fucking different people, yeah. you know? Different life decisions, different choices, different ambition, different drive. So, it's, like, there's something to be said about the individual in the situation, too. But it's, like, sometimes it does creep up on you. You know what I mean? Where you're just like, shit. You know what I mean? As much as people want to say, oh, fuck my parents. I never want to be them. All that shit. It's like, it, it can get pretty close, close to call sometime. You know what I mean? And that's why I've always just kind of been tripping as far as like, damn, like, what if like I just start spiraling? Like, what if I just like start drinking or something and I fucking love it? And the next right. thing I know, cause like, which it could, have, like, you know. could. Yeah. But you then could again, have. living in the what if sucks. Like, right. that's a lame way to live your life. So it's like, I don't know. It's just, like I said, for me personally, it's just not something I've ever really, really like, I don't feel like the it thing with that is you, you could go your whole life, never smoke a drink. You're not going to regret it. I, no, I, I would say, <laughs> like, I will you, say that. you're not going to be like, damn, I wish I would have drank yeah. more. Smoking weed does sound good. <laughs> not, I don't even know what it would do, but just the fact that if I could just suspend my fucking anxiety like that and just not be there for a minute that'd be pretty sick because i've been raw dogging my whole life <laughs> with just like i mean that was kind of me it. for a while yeah but then you like pop an edible and put on some frank ocean and yeah, your you life guitar, changes you know? <laughs> i don't know i'm super open to that too it's like i may not necessarily be doing it but i'm just like dude like expand your shit like you want to do fucking shrooms do it like, i was gonna say have you ever done mushrooms i dude i've never you never done anything and worst thing i've ever done is get my dick wet and that's like <laughs> that's it and i eat shitty horrible food all the time but that's the thing man Texas like, hey, they, they <laughs> hey that's high it. quality protein ain't no yeah. st- <laughs> steak and shrimp man that's it get the eight ounce steak and shrimp get a full loaded baked potato with it get the side of broccoli and a sweet peach tea and you're you're Fucked, man. You're done. Damn. It's a perfect meal, dude. I've been all over the place, man. <laughs> I can't find nothing meal. better than that <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? That's where it's at. I'm droning on again, bro. Duh. Okay, I got a question. So, with like the genre of music that your band plays, when I listen to it, I don't really hear much words like mm-hmm. that type. How do you go, how is, what's the writing process like? Because also like, so you, you have been working on like country stuff too. Yeah. So like, what's the writing process of songs like that? Cause I'm sure for, it might be the complete same. It just comes out and sounds different. Are you talking about for, for Kublai Khan? Yeah. So like when I hear stuff like that, I've only listened to a couple of your songs. So I, I don't, I can't like actually in my head think, but like that genre just to me in my head, I'm like most of it, I you like I can't even hear like words. Oh yeah. So what's like you know what's the writing process like of like, are you still telling the same stories that you tell in like a country song? Oh, you know yeah, what I mean? Dude, it's, like it's all the same shit. And as far as like the physical writing of the music, we like okay. So for instance, our I'll say our last record. We're about to put an EP out, 
but for our last record, we maybe had like two and a half songs, like halfway taped together. Like no vocals, even no lyrics, no nothing, just the music. Mm -hmm. Cause like we're a band that still writes organically. Like we all set up in the same room with equipment and just jam and just see what works and what sticks and what doesn't. But what we started doing, cause we'll be in the studio for like three weeks to a month. Sometimes depends. You know what I mean? Take that first week and just knuckle down. And like our last record, uh, it was called absolute. We, we wrote that in a week and that was our best selling record we've ever done. You know what I mean? But it's like, it's kind of like having a girlfriend, man. Like when you've been together long enough, you just know the chemistry, you know what she wants, what she doesn't want, where she wants to eat, where she doesn't want to eat. So it's the same thing with the band. Like, we can sit in a room now and produce something that is our sound and that doesn't deviate too much, but is still original to what we're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not just fucking giving everybody the same shit every single time, but we also need to stay in the lane where it's like, well, are we completely alienating our fans if, like, I just start singing or something? You know what I'm right. saying? So it's really, it's, for us, it's it's stupid how simple it is. But it took repetition to get to that point. You know what I mean? Because a lot of bands, dude, just in general, they'll have one motherfucker that writes all their shit. You know, they'll have this one fucking guy that can play everything. He'll write the music, and then they'll go in. Half the time, he's the one recording it, too. And then they'll have dudes that, that come in and just, like, play it. Or maybe have a little bit of input, but they don't track anything. They don't fucking do shit. And then it's it's a lot easier now because everybody's got the internet. You can literally write shit out, email it to your buddy. He's got a same setup like this. He can fucking plug his guitar up and then write to it. And then you have almost fully done demos before you go to the studio. But we don't do that. We don't do shit like that. I still in my truck have a fucking tape recorder with like a tape tape. You know what I mean? Like a cassette. Like a That's how we used to write, bro. We'd all sit in the same room. We'd come up with something sick. We'd go put it under a pillow so it didn't peek out. And we just jam our shit. And I would write lyrics to a fucking tape recorder. And this was maybe like six years ago. This wasn't like, Damn. it's fucked up. But we also were from Oklahoma. So it's like, <laughs> it was what it was. I'm going to get another drink. Yeah, for sure. Damn. That's interesting. I, I, I would be interested to see how other motherfuckers do it. Because I feel like the way we do it, we're so fucking timed out on it. And we've been doing it the way we've been doing it forever. I don't know. There's probably so many innovations. Probably, but at the same time, and especially I think for for you, like what you've said of like where you're at with with the music is would bringing in like writers or something Fuck add no, any bro. value to nah, you? It, it was, Hell no. We're too late to switch it up. Yeah, like, we're literally in like, in my opinion, the golden like, oh yeah, the golden years of the band where it's like we're we probably got a couple more years in us, but like. Like I said, like how much more gas is in the tank? If we're just being hundred percent mm -hmm. real, and that's where dudes get caught up, they're like, so, "I'm gonna do this for fucking ever." It's do like, you think I'm that not. that song you guys just put out that you said was your biggest ever was that? Is that do you think it's one of your best songs ever, or is it because you guys as a band are at the peak you've ever been? I think we're getting to the point where we have a very loyal and established like fan base that they're gonna like what we put out. I mean, kind of regardless, just because they like that style of music. Like, for instance, one of my favorite bands of all time is a band called Throwdown. And they've kind of gone through some changes over the years, you know what I mean, as far as their music. I think everything they've ever done is top-tier shit. They put out a record a few years ago. I want to say it was maybe fucking 2014 or some shit. And uh, it was fucking badass after all these years because it's like they didn't, deviate so hard that I was like, I can't digest this in my brain anymore. It's too different. But it's still similar enough where I'm like, dude, this is that shit I like. Because a lot of people, unfortunately, are like me, where they live in like this comfort zone with music. Where it's like, you ever hear the motherfuckers are like, oh, I like this old shit before you switch it up. It's because like, you attach a lot to that shit. Mm -hmm. And whenever bands, you got to find that sweet spot because you can't be putting out the same shit every single record. I'm I'm definitely the type where a lot of the <laughs> musicians that I listen to is I only like like their first album. Yeah. Because I put so much, like 
almost if you look through my Spotify, I got like two thousand saved songs. I could probably tell you where I was when I oh, first yeah. heard every single song on that list because I put so much of like my life and like what I'm doing at the time into the music I'm listening to. Mm-hmm. So that when so one of my favorite artists, they put out you know their first album, the 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 album or the song you discover an artist from, in my, like for me, never gets topped. Yeah, probably People just because of like the nostalgia of it. Like, it's like this one they can't beat it because this is what one mm-hmm. I first like grabbed onto, and like so many artists, I'll put out a whole album. I won't even like. Sometimes I don't even listen to. It. I don't even try because I just I'm like it's not going to be as good. Yeah, you know I do the same shit, man. Like I'll get hung up on one song and just like. I'll just run it through the ground, and then I'll be like, I should probably listen to some of the other shit. And then I do it, and I'm like, it ain't that one song. No, nope. like yep. You know, and then that's that's all I ever fucking do. And with Spotify and all this other shit now, it's like everything is so accessible in general. Like you talk about Spotify, Tinder, any of this shit. Everything is at your fingertips. And, like, I think that's really fucking bad for people because now people's attention spans are just becoming shorter and shorter. Oh, and shorter. God. Like, if you don't like something, well, I'll just fucking find the just next change thing. change it. You know what I mean? It, it requires zero effort now. Because it's everybody definitely wants me. to just place like, it in front of them. When I watch a movie, I'll be, like, watching a movie on my computer, on my phone, all at the same time. Because I can't, I can't put my brain on one thing. Because mm-hmm. I'm probably not interested. Or I'm just, like, fucking just all over the place all the time. My head just... It's, like, the accessibility. I can have three screens playing at one time, and I still need more. <laughs> like, <laughs> It's crazy, man. And, and it, dude, like all the younger kids nowadays that are growing up, they all have like fucking oh, tablets yeah. and shit. Like, I don't know. Like, it's fucking scary to look or like t- to see what the future holds or whatever. Yeah, so. they don't even have a fucking chance, dude. No, they've never seen a world outside of that, dude. I like, would, I took this class senior year where I I would I went to uh, the elementary school and we like spent recess with third graders. The first day <laughs> of class. They were like, yeah, so, like, if they ever have their phones on them, like, you have to take that. And I'm like, third graders, I'm like, they got cell phones? Or, yeah, like, they got iPhones and Man, shit. I'm wrong. like, what the fuck? I got a little <laughs> flip phone in, like, seventh grade right. that I had to put minutes on so I could send, like, ten texts. Yeah. yeah which, dude. like, even that's too, like, early, you know? Like, I'm so happy that we had to, like grow up playing with dirt and shit like, <laughs> oh, yeah. shit yeah. just yeah. using your like imagination did you guys so, ever have AOL uh, no, no. We're, we're like we're, like a, we're a little uh, younger than yeah, that dude. you're in like you're in like the prime time of that like the OG internet yeah. where like I had MySpace for maybe a year mm-hmm. and then like I feel like Facebook was like the first like Thing yeah. For us, but you guys had like all that shit. I remember trying to watch porn on fucking dial up. <laughs> <laughs> like when the when you would click on a picture and it would just be like, mm, mm, you're like one tip. And, yeah, and I'm like, fuck, dude, I gotta get my net before they come in. <laughs> but it's like the and I remember a time before that. I remember living in our house when there was no computer. The phone was fucking landline. I remember when my grandma got a cell phone. It was one of the Nokia's. Oh, just a brick, yeah. Yeah, and it had snake on it. We were all just like, what the fucking fuck, snake. Dude? Yeah. Like, we don't have to right. fucking have a cradle for this thing. Like, <laughs> we can just fucking, like, do whatever. You can walk around with it outside the house. <laughs> and it was just absurd. And now it's like, that dude, I'm yeah. 30-something now. That wasn't that long ago. I know. It is yeah. hyper-accelerating. Now you're saying oh, fucking yeah. third graders can, like, fucking. I remember back in when I was in probably, like, third, fourth grade. Me and like, I would be playing RuneScape, and the computer we had was so shitty that we had to put a blanket over it so it would like be dark enough to see the screen. (laughs) So I'd be like in my living room playing RuneScape, like fucking (laughs) because the computer was like the first one that ever came out. (laughs) Doesn't that game still exist? Oh, yeah, motherfuckers still play that. Not it's not good anymore. The they changed it like. I mean, we were probably in, like, seventh grade, or I was, like, and they changed it, and they made it, like, completely revamped, and they ruined everything. Did you guys have computers in elementary schools? You probably did, right? Yeah. Yeah, like, yep. the old-ass ones, though, like, like the Macintosh the first, before it yep, was, like, Apple yeah, yep. yeah, like, the first-generation computers. Yeah. Did you guys ever play Oregon Trail? We, 
Uh-huh. I never played that, but everyone else has like a memory of like playing that. I feel like in yeah. in school, uh, that was did. like the first glimpse into technology. It was like playing Oregon Trail. I could see that where it's not just like a ball bouncing across the screen; like yeah. it's an actual like storyline kind of, or like. Well, I, dude, I grew up with like my parents were fucking. I remember <laughs> my mom bought me a a uh, what is it called? The liters, I guess, a Mountain Dew. Oh yeah. My uncle fucking read what was in it, all the sugar, <laughs> screamed in my face and poured it down the fucking <laughs> So it's like we weren't allowed to have a lot of shit like that. Like I wanted to go play PlayStation. I go across the street to my buddy's house and play that shit. Because my dude, and I am I thank God for it, bro. Because like, my parents, that's how they were. They are like, you're not going to be a person doing this. Like, yeah. They're like, you want to be like your buddy across the street? Because he would just, his parents didn't give a fuck. He'd sit in a dark room all day and play fucking PlayStation. And then he became a juggalo, and he's probably dead. <laughs> you know juggalo. I'm and I'm no, no hate on juggalos. I'm, I like juggalos and shit, but it's like, damn, I'm glad I went outside. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, it's just a trip, man. Oh, that's great. Damn. <laughs> so what is it? Like, what's the craziest fucking story from touring? Like, you got to, like, have uh, something just insane. Well, that was one time. And this is this is crazy. I just thought about it. I'm like, what if the guy that's watching this right now is the guy from my story and he's gonna come find me and kill me? Cause like there was a dude in Albuquerque when we were on a tour. Albuquerque's sketchy. Yeah. This kid, he was fucking just geeked out of his mind, right? Comes up to our merch table and he's like, Hey, I got my hat knocked off during your set. Give me a hat. And we were like, Yeah, sure, man, twenty bucks. You know? He's like, No, and he starts pulling his hair. Like, give me a hat. We're just like, oh, you got to go. You know what I mean? And they eventually, like, escorted him out. They're like, we got the kid a fucking... I mean, he's like a kid. He's probably 17, 18. They're like, we got him a fucking Uber. Like, he just got hit really hard, and he's all out of his shit, and he's probably strung out on some shit, right? And we're like, ah, oh, fuck him. Like, we'll never fucking... Who cares? You know what I mean? Because, like, it's your fucking problem. Like, it's not our fucking fault. You know what I mean? So, later, we, we go outside, and the venue is like set up where you load into the back. So we're in this back parking lot and this kid comes up and he's like, Hey man, like I need a hat. I lost (laughs) my hat. Give me a hat. And he's like pulling his hair to the point where I'm like, dude, that's gotta hurt. Like you're, you're being weird, man. We're like, yo, we're not going to give you a hat, man. Like we're really sorry. You gotta go. You know what I'm saying? And so he goes across the street and he's got his little car over here and his fucking sister comes up and she's like, yeah, you guys need to give him a hat. We're like, no, like, you got to go, too. Go. We're, like, loading out. She goes across the street, starts beating the shit out of him, right? <laughs> starts fucking yelling at him. Probably being like, you're such a fucking pussy. You got to go get a fucking hat and all this shit. <laughs> and we're like, holy shit. These people are fucking nuts. And so the kid, like, somehow made his way back. Because we're sitting there loading in, and we're just, like, bullshitting. Like, we're bullshitting right now. Standing. And one of the guys is like, yo, our brake lights are on. And it's like, Why? We go around the front of the van. The motherfucker is just sitting in our van like this. <laughs> Got in our van and is just sitting there. And we were like, dude, get the fuck out of here. What are you doing? <laughs> and we were like, all the bands are standing here like, all right, this is getting kind of fucking weird. You know, like, this is fucking strange. Like, this yeah. kid's obviously on some shit. So we're saying all this shit. And I'm like, oh, he's going to come back. He's going to do it. Literally, we're all standing in a circle talking. This dude comes up out of his car that was on that little corner, comes, drives it up onto the curb, gets out with a tire iron. And I was like, there he is. <laughs> like, he's he's coming. He's going to do something, you know? And then one of the, the other guys on this tour, he's fucking huge, tall guy. His name's Zach. He literally comes up. The dude has a tire iron. He just snatches it from him and goes, this is mine now. <laughs> and we talked about, like, making a tour shirt that was a tire iron. <laughs> this is and he's like, this is fucking mine now. You know what I mean? And the kid's like, oh, my God, I'm like, freaking out, like, saying all this shit. And we're like, all right, we're going to leave now because this is getting fucking weird. And when we're on tour, we usually would, like, caravan with people, like, in a line. Yeah. Bro, we make it three minutes down the street. And we hear somebody honking, like, in the distance. And we're just like, what the fuck? The band behind us starts throwing their flashers on. And we're like, holy shit. We look in the rear view. They're piling out of the van. And we throw our shit. We're at a stoplight. Three vans. Throw our shit in park. All get out. Apparently this dude was behind them honking, like trailing us. Got out and started kicking their trailer. So these dudes got out of the fucking van. 
start chasing this fucking dude, right? We all start chasing him. Everybody starts chasing him. Our shit's in park with the doors open at a fucking stoplight in Albuquerque, New Mexico, right? <laughs> so we're fucking going. And there was this dude named Austin in one of the other bands. And he literally was just built like fucking Brock Lesnar. Just like, like just, <laughs> just a meaty boy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'll never forget. He was just running. And he was doing like one of those fucking like he knows how to run runs. He literally just yells at the top of his lungs. He goes, come here, pussy. And like... <laughs> The left hooks the fucking kid, knocks his ass on the fucking ground. And we're all like, yo, this is going too far. Like, this kid. And the other band was like, yo, he was kicking our shit. Like, we got to beat the fuck out of him now. And we're like, oh, okay, whatever. You know? <laughs> and so this kid just starts getting that fucking shit beat out of him. You ever seen, like, WWE Raw? Oh, or yeah. Where they, they, like, it's a ladder match, and they get up, and the dude's just covered in blood. Yeah. That's what the kid looked like. And I'm like, yo, this is fucked up. And the kid wouldn't stop getting up. Everybody kept telling him, like, stay the fuck down, like, because we're trying to turn around and walk yeah. away. And he wouldn't. He was just kept getting back up. Just like, like oh, hey, look, give me a hat. hat. You know, like, <laughs> straight up, dude. He was on a one-track mind. He was geeked out. He's getting that hat. <laughs> you should have just gave him a hat, dude. No, <laughs> this motherfucker was never. He, I hope he never gets another hat in his whole oh fucking God. life. But he's sitting there, right? And we're like, yo, we got to go. So we all start running. And he's getting up. Fucking, you can see the, the lights from police coming. And I was like, yo. This kid won't sit the fuck down. He's covered in blood. They're going to tell him to get on the ground. He's going to start talking about a hat. They're going to beat his ass again. Yeah. I was like, this is bad. So we get back. Our fucking vans are in a row. One of the dudes from one of the other bands, and I'm not naming any names. That's all the thing. Like, stayed behind, fucked this kid's car up. Uh Took a traffic cone, put it through his fucking windshield, slashed all his tires. Like, while we were chasing the kid down trying to (laughs) de-escalate He completely, at a stoplight, <laughs> with cars backed up, like, destroys this kid's car. We all get in our fucking vans, go around and trail. We have to pass back by what's happening. We pass back by, the cops are pulling up, the dude's covered in blood fucking, and he's all geeked out of his mind. Like, he doesn't even point, like, there they are, you know what I'm saying? And, dude, we were, like, literally just kind of sitting in the van, like, shall we expect, like, a murder charge if this right. kid gets fucking like, killed or something? Never heard anything about it. Never seen the kid ever again. Nothing ever happened. We're just like, that's fucking damn stupid, bro. And there's shit like that happens. And like, Bartow's band was on that tour, but they weren't on that date. Damn. Because their, their band was called No Zodiac. But they said that their fucking van broke down because they're from Arizona. We had a show in Dallas and a show in Albuquerque to get to Mesa. They're like, oh, our van broke. We can't make those two shows. Because it's like, yeah, of course you can't. You want to sit in your fucking house and not have to do these two shows. So we called them No Shodiac because they just weren't showing up. But, yeah, I was like, damn, dude, if Vardo would have been there, he would have shot that kid. Like, straight up, that kid would have had fucking nine rounds in his body. But, yeah, that was a pretty crazy thing that happened. He was definitely like, like, I don't know if he was like native or what, but he was was crazy looking to begin with. And he was just geeked out of his mind. He was just, dude, he was, I felt bad That's a cra- Yeah, that's a crazy story. Because I was like, bro, you are on so many drugs. To the point where, like I said, he wouldn't, he was getting, like, fucked up. Like, he probably had, like, broken bones in his yeah. face. And just, was like, I'm good. Where's my hat? You know? yeah, and, just, and it's like, dude, this kid's the fucking Terminator. <laughs> and, yeah. It was just He's the up. fucking T-1000 just trying to that's get his hat. Wild. Yeah. It was, it was wild. Damn. It was crazy fucking shit. But, yeah. Maybe he's dead. I have no idea. Kind of don't care, to be honest with you, but that's just how it is. Because I was trying to de-escalate the whole thing. I was yeah. like, oh, just stay down, buddy. Like, don't do this, you know? But, I mean, you can't go around kicking people's shit. Sometimes yeah. you get fucked up doing that, you know? Have you still had, had his tire iron. <laughs> <laughs> so, Have you had any crazy stories, like, outside of the United States or anything when you were on tour? Yeah. Oh. I, had a, I had a guy in Belgium ask if he could fuck me. <laughs> we were at a festival and he was wearing a kilt. Because they just do shit over there like yeah. that when they're at these big fests. Just shows me his dick. Goes, what the fuck? And I was like, No, nah, I'm good. No, man, I'm good. I'm trying to go watch title fight. Calm down. You know what I mean? But yeah. So I got. I had a guy one time in Germany said he was going to beat the shit out of me if I didn't let him cook me a pizza. Because I ordered. <laughs> he, got, he got really drunk and he was at merch. And uh, I was eating a pizza and he's like, Where'd you get that pizza, man? And I told him and he literally like. Like, head down, looks at me. He's like, I'm going to beat the fucking shit out of you if you don't let me make you a pizza. (laughs) He's like, I make way better pizzas. And starts talking about how good his pizzas are and how fucking terrible the pizza. And I was like, this pizza's pretty good. I was like, if you want to fuck me up over a pizza, 
And he was like, dude, he was like maybe 120 pounds, like just drunk yeah. off his ass. And I was like, dude, I, I, I'm not going to let you make a pizza because I am eating this pizza right now, <laughs> and it's pretty good. But I'll never forget that. I was like, who the fuck? Like, who's this dude think he is saying he's going to fuck me up over a pizza in Germany? Uh, you know what I mean? Fucking Dave Portnoy's cousin or some shit <laughs> over there. Just... Dude, kid was a goober, uh, man. That's funny as hell. That's hilarious. I'm trying to think. Shit. Yeah. I mean, uh, oh, when we were in Japan... I was, first day we were there. Okay, it's like a fucking 20-hour flight to Japan. Damn, dude. I didn't get up once. <laughs> I sat the whole time. Oh, shit. Which was fucking stupid. And I, anybody that's watching, don't ever sit on a plane for like that long. Because it'll cause nerve damage and shit. So, we get up. We're in fucking, I think we're in like, I don't know. I think we're in Tokyo. I don't, we played like five different places, but like several of which were just different wards of Tokyo. Because Tokyo is fucking huge. But sorry, man. And we're uh, just chilling. We get we get in these hostels, and the hostel is about as big as that closet. <laughs> like you walk in, and it's like bamboo flooring and like a couple mattresses. And we're just like, damn, this is fucking nuts. Sleep on this floor, and I wake up not having thought about it, and I was like, damn, that probably hurt my back. Like not <laughs> get on a plane and not stand up the whole time, and then sleep on a bamboo floor. Yeah. So I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna go do some push-ups. So I go up to the roof, and I was, like, doing push-ups, and I, like, felt something pop, and I was like, that wasn't good. But I, like, kept going. And literally, by the end of the day, I couldn't feel my left arm. And so for the next six months, I couldn't feel my left arm. We had to drop tours. I had to fucking do, uh, like, wellness stuff at a chiropractor to get the feeling back of my arm. My fucking sit, like, it, like, seized up, and, like, fucking I had, uh, what's the fucking word? Um... It atrophied. Oh, like I was yeah. at Home Depot one day, and one of my buddies, I saw him, he's like, wow, where are you laying out all that shit? He's like, what the fuck's up with your arm, dude? <laughs> it's just tiny. And I was just like little into my side. I was like, oh, I can't move it. <laughs> he's, like, <laughs> he's like, why? I was like, because I didn't get up on a plane in Japan, and I tried doing push-ups on a roof, man. <laughs> just, I was like, there weren't any fucking doctors over there that would take my fucking health insurance, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I came back, and the doctor that I went to, because this was back when Obamacare dropped, so I lost my fucking doctor and all my insurance and all that shit. And so I was on a wait list to meet my new doctor. Meanwhile, my fucking, I'm, my arm's just like shriveling up. And he tells me, he's like, oh, yeah. He's like, you have entrapment and all this stuff in your chest. He's like, everything's seized up. He's like, it's the nerve on your neck. It's like your spinal cord is like fucking swelling. So the fluid's pushing on the nerves and it's like cutting all the shit out. And he's like, we need to do surgery. But he's like, to do the surgery, he's like, we're going to have to cut the front of your throat open, move everything and work on it from the inside of your spinal cord. And he's like... I was like, no, we're not doing that. I was like, how the fuck am I supposed to afford that? Like, that's yeah. not happening. And I fucking limp out of the place with my fucking arm. And luckily, my best friend's wife worked for a chiropractor. And they honestly did. Some people call it, like, voodoo shit and, like, witch doctor shit. I think chiropractors are the shit. Oh, yeah. And he fixed me up, dude, for, like, a really good deal. And, yeah, that was actually how I got into lifting. Cause like I was like doing bullshit before I didn't have any plan. I didn't know what I was doing. I was like, Oh, if I do some crunches, I'll be fucking huge. You know? And it's like, <laughs> that's not how it works. You know? Yeah. And so, uh, he was like, yo, do you have a gym membership? And I was like, yeah, but I don't ever go. He was like, go to the gym, start getting on the machine. He's like, find the fucking 2.5 pound dumbbell and start trying to get the strength back in your arm. Cause he's like, your muscles are like balloons. You know? He's like, you start working it back up. It'll reinflate. He's like, mm -hmm. you'll be fine within some time. You know what I mean? And I never stopped. And that's the whole reason I went to the gym is because I fucked my arm up in Japan. Yeah. I could I could imagine you on, like, stage, like, going crazy Whoa. and your arms just flopping. Dude, like. there were videos. There was one video where I fucking, I, I was, like, doing vocals with this hand, and I forgot. So I, like, tried <laughs> grabbing the mic with this one, and it, like, didn't. And I remember I got the mic in this hand because I was trying to be like, I do vocals with my left hand. This doesn't feel right. That's like trying to like jerk off with the wrong hand. It's yeah. not where you're at. So I was doing it like this, and there was literally a video. I used to have it saved where I, I grabbed my elbow and was like pushing the mic like closer to my mouth because I physically – I remember when I got home, I was like literally looking in the fucking mirror, and I, I had a, a button-up shirt that I was wearing. And it was the most pathetic shit in the world. But I was staring at myself in the mirror crying because I couldn't button my shirt. And uh. I was like, damn, dude, this is what people feel like to, like, 
be paralyzed and shit. Right. You know what I mean? Because that's what the doctor told me. I was like, yo, I got tours coming up. I was like, I can't drop this shit to get surgery. He's like, all right, well, then you're just going to lose your arm. He's like, that shit's going to, like, your nerves and all that shit, I guess, will, like, crystallize. And I was like, yeah, fuck that. I'm not getting surgery, so I just got to figure it out. Yeah. Well, shit. <laughs> Pretty few good up. stories. <laughs> yeah. You know? Damn. So you're moving to Florida. Yeah. You're going to start doing tattoos. You said you draw then? Like, that was already, like... Drawing? Yeah, you like... like oh, yeah. You're yeah. already good at drawing, so I that's kind of... Before I graduated high school, I was part of a program. I went to UCLA for art to, like, look at their art program and do all this shit, which is just a cash grab. They're just trying to get fucking kids to, like, be like, oh, let's go to UCLA. Right. Mm-hmm. right. But it's like, if that were to be any kind of credential, it's like, yeah, I... Cutting hair is fucking hard, bro. I can't cut hair. But it's like, <laughs> when it comes to drawing and shit, that's actually what I was good at. So, I think that'll come pretty easy. What kind of tattooing do you think? Or are you going to just do it all? I, I like, want to really just do American traditional, but I don't know if that's oversaturated. I feel like tattooing in general right now is probably oversaturated. But It's definitely the most popular right now. So, I mean, yeah. the, the market's there, I would say. Well, I got homies that just fucking specialize in, like, anime tattoos. And they make fun. They're booked out for like a year in advance. And I would. Like, those seem to be some of like. I don't. I don't want to say hardest, but like you gotta really know how to fucking make something look real. Hell yeah! You know what I mean. Plus the the colors have to be so solid. Yeah, there can't be. I like don't like any of that shit just because. You don't like anime. No, <laughs> but I also don't like those types of tattoos, like colorful. Like I don't know. I just yeah. Not my style, basically. I just wear it all black every day anyway, so color like that. But Most of your tattoos are just black, right? Yeah, it's all just writing and shit. <laughs> you got a bunch of tattoos? Yeah. They're all black and white, though. Hey, we're all just black and white. Don't you, is, isn't your whole body, or like, you have yeah. nothing that shows is tatted, but the rest of your body is tatted? I can wear a t-shirt and nothing shows, but I take my t-shirt up from the neck down. Everything's completely done. My back's done. <laughs> Like, and that's the thing that's going to suck, dude, is I know they're going to make me tattoo myself. And I haven't got a tattoo in ages. I was going to say, I was like, I'll, I let, you, I'll like let you give me tattoos. a tattoo right now. <laughs> dude, if I had my shit, it would I got a gun. Oh, yeah, uh, nah, we can't be doing that shit. That shit, I would, I'd fuck you up, bro. It would hurt. I remember, we got numbing cream. Do you? Yeah. I was thinking about that. I'm like, I wonder if my fucking, if my mentor would think, like, I'm a cheater. If, if you I were to tattoo that, myself, we'll put the number. Probably cream on. they call you like, pussy. Fucking pussy. <laughs> so I don't think I can do that. I think I'm just gonna have to deal with it. But I'm like that. I'm pretty sure it's part of a tattoo apprenticeship. It's yeah, like this Definitely. part right here, you gotta fucking do something. Yeah, just whatever, man. Fucking, I'll eat it. I don't give a shit. I just, I don't want to do it. I hate whenever I go to the doctor and they have to draw blood. Oh. I'm like, Mm-mm. I don't want to do that shit. Needles fucking suck. Getting tattooed fucking sucks. Anybody that says they like getting tattooed, I hate Bibber. it. Piece of shit. I get shit all hot and dude. sweaty. I'm like, fucking. I fucking, I fart the it. whole time. I'm like, sweating. <laughs> I get up from the table and it's like. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's fucking. That shit is fucked up. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we probably wrap it up about. I don't know how long it's been, but. It's been a minute. <laughs> been a minute. Last question mm-hmm. here on the Left Home Pod. If you. If you got some people at home watching that are just trying to fucking chase a dream or do whatever they're at, truly passionate about, kind of like what we were talking about earlier, like, what's the one thing you're going to tell them? It's tough, man, because even with that, it still fluctuates every day of, like, of what even for my life, what I'm fucking doing. Mm-hmm. That's tough. Too. I would honestly just say just, like, fucking just, like, it's so corny, but just, like, don't give up. You know what I mean? Because honestly, if you give up, don't even fucking try, you know? And just listen to yourself. Listen to other people, too, but, like, don't lose sight of what the fuck you're in it for. Don't let other motherfuckers persuade you on, well, you should do this or this or that. It's like, nine times out of ten, your gut instincts are correct, so just go with that shit. You know what I mean? Don't let Don't let motherfuckers use you. Don't let them run you around. But don't be so closed off where it's like you think you're numero uno because you're fucking not, you know? Nobody is until you are. And yeah. even then, you're that for 10 minutes. And then some other motherfucker's going to come in and sweep you. So, sounds negative, but I swear to God, it's positive. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's good. All right, well, shit. Thank you for coming on. Glad to get you on before <laughs> you, you 
Thanks before you that. fucking nice to meet you, man. take yeah. off to Florida. Oh, yeah. I've been wa- like you were when I we just started this like three months ago now, maybe two months ago. And you're a person who like I was like I'll definitely have him on like. And then I saw your move and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> God, oh, send yeah. you a yeah. message. Yeah. I was like, hopefully no, dude, you got I, some time. The minute I got it, I was like, that would be cool. Because, yeah. like, I actually know you. You're a cool fucking dude. Like, I've done a lot of, like, not podcasts are a relatively new thing, but, like, interviews and shit that are just hot ass, bro. Yeah. And it's like, dude. This dude. is, like, we obviously want to give people some, a little bit of, like, knowledge in here. But more or less, we we're covered just a lot of shit, here to bro. fucking talk about whatever the fuck we want, really. Oh, yeah. You know? And if I said anything that's, like, too problematic or anything. No, we don't cut shit. Yeah. Cool. Fuck them. I mean, yeah. Motherfuckers I, need to hear shit, dude. And they just... How do you, Getting canceled with Matthew. <laughs> hey, you know, I'm ready for it. Let's fucking go, dude. I, I don't know, man. But shit. Don't even get me started. That shit, that's a whole other can of worms, man. People can just fuck all the way off, man. Motherfuckers just need to say what they need to say. And if you don't like it, man, don't fucking listen. You know what I mean? And if it bothers you that much, maybe you should really question yourself. You should really think, why is this bothering me? Maybe it's not their fucking problem. Maybe it's my fucking problem. You know what I mean? So, yeah, suck a dick. Who gives a shit? <laughs> There's the clip. <laughs> That's it. Hell yeah. All right, man. No, this is cool. I appreciate it. Cigarettes on cigarettes. My mama think I stink. I got pearls in my hoodies. All the homies think he stink. I miss my cocoa butter kisses. I miss my cocoa butter kisses. Cigarettes on cigarettes. My mama think I stink. I got pearls in my